Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Sydney Memorial Stadium in 30 and 0 Field. I'm Greg Snyder along with Mike Ward and my dad, Ed Snyder, who'll be on stats tonight. So we're getting ready finally to play some football tonight. You know, we said at the beginning of the year, uh, you know, with COVID concerns and everything, any Friday night that we get to play football is a good one, and this one's included. Yeah, you know, it's uh, interesting weather we have tonight here. You know, uh, it's actually pretty nice out right now, but uh, there about, you know, an hour ago or so, uh, very strong winds kind of took out a couple of the team's tents down yeah. here and made things interesting for the coaching staffs. But uh, looks like we, we should have some good football to be played here tonight and uh, should be a lot of fun. Of course, the Yellow Jackets, uh, you know, fall out of the playoffs last year in Butler uh, the week before. Uh, so obviously a little bit disappointing, but you still got seniors that are looking to play uh, hopefully two more games and also some young guys that are trying to make an impression for next year. Yeah, very unique situation. You know, usually you lose a playoff game and you're, you're done for the year, but a uh, chance to, you know, like you said, get some guys, some some reps, uh, send the seniors out on good notes with a, a couple more games, hopefully, and, uh, you know, just give them everybody a chance to play a little bit more. Absolutely. And uh, Yellow Jackets, the opponent tonight, uh, traveling up north on I-75, uh, the Butler Aviators from Vandalia. And then, of course, next week they'll host uh, Troy, pending that hopefully everything is still yeah. intact. You know, we've heard some uh, some teams. I know Northmont comes to mind uh, that we heard earlier today that have, uh, you know, not been able to play this week. So you know, our hearts and our minds are with them. Hopefully uh, everybody's okay. Um, everybody gets better. But, yeah, you hate to see that at this point in the year. But uh, hopefully the Jackets uh, looks like they're going to play tonight, and then hopefully we get one more next week. Uh, so let's look at the Butler Aviators. They're going to come in this year with a record of 2-6 and six, uh, overall, 1-3 and three in the MVL. Last week with an impressive 32-22 to 22 win over West Carrollton. So if you look comparatively over the last two weeks, pretty similar scores uh, against the West Carrollton team. Uh, Butler obviously playing better now than they did early in the year. Yeah, you know, the transitive property would probably keep the show that this would be a pretty close game. That doesn't always work out, you know, when you start doing that. But, uh, yeah, you would think this would be a very uh, good matchup. You know, they uh, had a close game with Greenville that they got a, a, the, the other win. And uh, I think they're starting to maybe play better football because uh, you look at their scores early in the season and you probably think they don't beat West Carrollton. But uh, they get that win last week. And uh, although we haven't seen them play, uh, I, I think they're probably trending in the right direction. Sure, and as we go through their roster here in just a few minutes, you're going to see a lot of juniors playing. And, mm -hmm. you know, the Yellow Jackets obviously have a great senior class uh, with some underclassmen, but a lot of the key positions for Butler uh, will be juniors. And obviously these last two games can be a tremendous uh, – you know, advantage for them getting ready for next year as well. Yeah, and you know, when you're talking about juniors and, and, and sophomores, you know, when you're in those those middle grades, when you get to this point in the season, those players are totally different than when they started the year. You know, a junior now, uh, he might have been almost, uh, you know, uh, an early sophomore when he started the year, but you grow, you get better, and uh, teams can change a lot over the course of the season. So looking at Vandalia's uh, schedule so far this year, they opened up at tip and lost 30 to 13. Then lost to Piqua, 43-18. to 18. Of course, we saw how good the Indians are. They're still in the play in the yeah. playoffs uh, tonight, I believe. Uh, Troy uh, lost to Troy in week three, 28-14 to 14 in a hard-fought game. Then got their first win at Greenville, 17-6, to 6, uh, before falling to Xenia, 17-12. to 12. Then lost at Fairborn, 39-0. to 0. And then lost in the first round of the playoffs, a close game to Franklin, 14-6. to 6. And then last week, an impressive 32-22 to 22 win over West Carrollton. In that game, Butler uh, jumped on West Carrollton early and then, uh, you know, fought off a, a valiant comeback by the Pirates. Uh, they led 24 to nothing at halftime, but then a 22 to eight third quarter by uh, West Carrollton really made it interesting. But Butler held off for the 32 to 22 win. Uh, just looking at the most recent stats, then from the last game, uh, Cody Joins, the quarterback, went 10 for 16 for 90 yards and two touchdowns, uh, no interceptions. And if you look at the stats, which we'll go over here in just a second. Uh, you know, you're going to hear a lot of interceptions from the Butler quarterbacks, especially early in the year. But last game, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, and we've said it a million times. But, boy, those turnovers and big penalties, those just mean the difference between winning and losing a lot of these games. Yeah, at the high school level, I don't know that there's anything more important than keeping and control the ball, not turning it over uh, because every possession is very vital. You know, you don't have the length of quarters that you have in the, in the college or, or pro game, so it's a shorter game and uh, every every little bit matters. So we anticipate Cody Joins taking the snaps for Butler tonight. Uh, running the ball with 19 carries for 41 yards and two touchdowns last week was Austin Flory. And then a name you're going to hear pretty much in every aspect of the game, special teams, offense, defense, a little bit of everything, Luke Mitchell. 
Uh, eight carries for 29 yards and then six catches for 46 yards. Also, Kyle Fulham had two catches for 41 yards in the last game. And then as you go down to the defensive stats, once again, there's that name. Luke Mitchell had six tackles to lead their defense. And then Donovan Collins and Mike Masters, each with four tackles. Uh, overall on the year for uh, the Butler Aviators, looking at their offensive stats, they've played two quarterbacks uh, in the middle of the year. Uh, Joins did not play early in the year. And then Luke Mitchell instead took over uh, at quarterback for a while there. But uh, number 14, Cody Joins, has... Uh, 47% completion percentage, 57 for 122 on the year, 584 yards, three touchdowns and 11 interceptions. But like we said, coming off of his most efficient game with two touchdowns and no interceptions against West Carrollton last week. Yeah, you know, uh, anytime you, you don't turn the ball over, and, you know, I know he didn't have a ton of yards in the game last week, but you manage that game, you, you, you do what you need to on offense as a quarterback and run the, run the offense, you've got a great chance to give your team to Number win. Number 12, Luke Mitchell, like we talked about, he's going to be all over the field tonight for Vandalia. Um, but uh, he did play three games at quarterback, went 41 for 71 for 453 yards, three touchdowns, and six interceptions. Both of those... Uh, young men are, are juniors. Uh, like we said, you're going to hear a lot of juniors uh, through, throughout the, the night for Vandalia. Running the ball, uh, like we said last game, Austin Flory got most of the carries. He had 19 carries for 41 yards, but also on the air, Brayton Bishop, number 20, has 75 carries for 219 yards. And Luke Mitchell has 62 attempts for 230 yards and no touchdowns. Receiving, Luke Mitchell, once again, the leading receiver for the Aviators. 27 catches for nearly 300 yards and a touchdown. And also number 13, Kaysen Bennett, has 23 catches for 233 yards and two touchdowns. And Kyle Fulham coming off of a very nice game last week. 19 catches for 259 yards. Looking at the Yellow Jackets, uh, we're going to see some new, new faces for the Yellow Jackets. Of course, Sydney coming off a very disappointing loss last week. Not just the loss, but the way that it happened, obviously very, very disappointing uh, because the Jackets could still be in the playoffs, you know. Uh, two very close losses to Stebbins, but give Stebbins credit. They've won a lot of those close games this year, and, you know, a lot of times that's the difference between being 6-2 and two and 2-6 two and six or in – last week's case six and two for Stebbins four and four for the Yellow Jackets yeah you know I think you and I both thought going into last week's game it was kind of a toss-up whoever handled things better whoever played better on that particular night was going to win and it really did come down to the very end there and uh, you know when you, you play a team twice and lose by a total of three points it's yeah. tough to take yeah but uh, you, you know uh, the Jackets have a chance to bounce back tonight and uh, you know get a good taste in their mouth again. sure and, and obviously again key penalties key turnovers yeah. just doom the Yellow Jackets, but that doesn't overshadow a wonderful game by Cedric Johnson. Said had uh, 168 yards through the air and 152 yards on the ground. 15 for 26 throwing for 168 yards and a touchdown, no interceptions. Uh, and then ran it 16 times for 152 yards. Uh, had a long 60-yard run in the ball game. EJ Davis, uh, who you will not see tonight, had 16 carries for 62 yards. And Devin Taborn, who you also will not see tonight, had three carries for 13 yards and a touchdown. So the Yellow Jackets uh, down their top two running backs, per se, but uh, they also have a quarterback that's done a lot of carrying for them this year. So obviously the run game should still be in pretty good hands, hopefully. Yeah, you know, said real close there to being the leading rusher. And, you know, uh, I know Coach DeVere, and the offense coordinator, really likes to spread it around. So, I, you know, I don't think it's going to be a huge concern of his. Anytime you lose talented athletes, that's that's never a good thing. But the fact that he likes to spread it around, he'll get the ball to everybody and, and, and make it work tonight. Absolutely. And Ted Johnson coming into the ball game, 92 for 162, 57 uh, percent. And that would be for 1,320 yards. And that is an MVL leading 1,320 yards, eight touchdowns and five interceptions. Obviously, Sydney has been one of the more prolific pass teams in the league. It'd be interesting to see how the weather affects that tonight. Yeah, uh, you know, like right now, uh, the wind's not too bad. It's not raining. Uh, you know, you wouldn't consider it too, too big of a factor, but, there, you know, we still have a chance for some things to come through, and uh, that can really hamper it. You know, I've been on some teams that uh, were, were five wide or, you know, heavy heavy pass teams, spread teams, and uh, sometimes even the wind is a bigger factor than even the rain. Uh, you know, sure. just moving that ball around and, and making things sail, which can lead to interceptions. And let's not pretend that it's all on the offense, that the elements uh, pose a difficulty for you know obviously uh, when you're throwing the ball uh, you have to worry about a good snap 
uh, you know, the quarterback's got to catch it. He's got to throw it well. He's got to have a good grip on the ball. And you got to catch and secure it from a receiver perspective. But the defense doesn't know where they're going when they're on defense. Uh, or, I'm sorry, doesn't know where the offense is going. So sometimes that can be an advantage uh, for the offense in what elements like this. Yeah, you know, making cuts and things like that. It's important to, you know, go to your fundamentals, break down, make good tackles, and uh, keep your feet up underneath you when it's uh, – uh, interesting weather. Obviously, you know, now that we've went to field turf, that makes a big difference. You know, gosh, if this if this game was played six, seven years ago. Week nine on that <laughs> grass. Can you imagine what that would be like? Yeah, especially, you know, the last week we've had a ton of rain here in this yeah. area. And uh, yeah, it would be a muddy mess out there. And uh, I guess you'd put out on the inch spikes and just try to go <laughs> after it out there. But it would definitely change the game plan uh, with the beautiful field we have here at uh, at City Memorial Stadium and 30 and 0 field. I, I think mo the, for the most part, they'll be able to do what they want to do tonight. So. so rushing the ball for the Jackets on the year, like we said, without E.J. Davis tonight, but he had 104 carries for 541 yards and eight touchdowns. Cedric Johnson, uh, 110 carries for 475 yards and seven touchdowns, so nearly 500 yards rushing uh, for Cedric Johnson. Devin Taborn, 20 carries for 55 yards and two touchdowns. Another player the Yellow Jackets will be without tonight. Um, and we anticipate, uh, once again, this is all rumor, and just looking out there right now is the offense practice. This is number seven, Donovan Johnson, five carries for 25 yards on the year. And uh, Donovan has been playing uh, corner for the Yellow Jackets. Has not taken many offensive snaps this year, but you know from coaching him in the past, he's no stranger to running the ball. Oh, no, you know, uh, as a freshman, Donovan played uh, quite a bit of quarterback. He loved to run the ball at that time. And, you know, last year there were some times there where uh, we had some players out and some things uh, going on that uh, Donovan filled in at running back and did an admiral job. He, I, You know, I think he probably had twice that many carries last year uh, in the season than he does uh, so far in this season. So he's definitely capable. Uh, it'll just be how the, how the game plan comes together tonight. Sure, and, and when you have somebody like that uh, who has been a dominant force on your defense in the secondary against a Butler team that is not scared to throw the ball, um, obviously the cumulative effect there is if Donovan has to play more offense, somebody's probably going to have to step up on defense. Yeah, and you know, um, that's definitely a factor and maybe the question the big question I have and I don't know the answer to this is you know who's going to give Donovan a spell on offense you know be that second back for you know, the Yellow Jackets I, I doubt we see Donovan play every running back snap tonight so it'll be interesting to see who shares that backfield with him and gives him some breaks so that he can still perform at a high level on defense absolutely and uh, the Yellow Jacket receivers uh, as we've seen all year the Yellow Jackets not afraid to spread it around as they have uh, four main receivers that all have double figure catch and all near 300, yeah. if not over 300 yards. Jacob Wheeler is the leading receiver right now in terms of yardage with 398 yards on 23 catches and three touchdowns. Talk about Jacob's development. You remember him as a, you know, a little freshman to where he is now as a senior. Uh, it's really become a focal point for the offense. It, it's been great for me to see. Uh, Jacob is one of those kids that every time you go in the weight room and you come to practice, you know, Jacob does the drill right. He does the lift right. He pays attention to form, and he just does things exactly how he's asked. He plays that way, too. He does. He runs his routes right. He gets to the spot on the field that he needs to. On defense, he does his job. You know, he's just kind of the prototypical kid that does his job, develops as he grows, and as a senior is a huge part of this Yellow Jacket team. Absolutely. Another senior receiver, number three, Avante Martin, 24 catches, 344 yards, and three touchdowns on the year. Uh, Isaiah Clark, a junior, 14 catches for 276 yards and a touchdown. And Sam Reynolds, number 19, the sophomore receiver, 21 catches for 270 yards and a touchdown. So once again, we got the Yellow Jackets and the Aviators. We're going to step aside for just a minute, and then we'll get ready for the national anthem and the start of the ball game. We're just about six minutes away from the four and four Sydney Yellow Jackets taking on the two and six Butler Aviators. Thanks for joining us.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Sydney Memorial Stadium in 30 and 0 Field. Once again, I'm Greg Snyder from SHS TV Productions, along with uh, Mike Ward, my color man, and my dad, Ed Snyder, will be on stats tonight. Uh, injuries are a real thing, even for announcers. Yeah. How, how about that? Yeah, you know, uh, went to take my headset off there for a second, poke myself in the eye. You know, I think I'll be able to game through it here. Uh, but, uh, you know, I might need to see the Wilson Health trainer, Beth Dankelson, running around down there. Might need her to look at it at halftime maybe. But, no, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> good. My I'm, pride's I'm hurt more than that. anything, I think. But uh, we, we must p uh, press on. Yeah. And uh, speaking of injuries, though, <laughs> in all seriousness, the Jackets are going to be without two linemen. Um, uh, key ones. Evan Kennedy obviously goes out with a knee injury early in the game last week. He's probably done for the year. And then Jackson Pettit, the defensive tackle, also with a knee. Uh, MCL strain, I think is what it is. Um, so uh, he's probably out tonight. Uh, you know, those are tough losses for the Yellow Jackets, not just in terms of those guys being good players, but now you're talking about more guys playing both sides of the ball. Um, so, yeah, you, you know, then your backups yeah. uh, are, are now in. So now you worry about if something else happens. But, uh, you know, the good thing about what we said about the Jackets offensive line so far this year, they've been deep. They have. They've been able to plug in, you know. Uh, the, the biggest thing, concern, and I think you, you kind of alluded to it there, um, you know, you, you're losing a senior that's really developed this year and, and kind of been a leader out there. And then obviously a junior who's been a three-year starter for Sydney and uh, definitely is a leader on that offensive line. So, you, you know, sometimes even the leadership that you lose is the thing that you can't replace beyond their physical gifts and skills so absolutely and uh you know looking forward obviously to this ball game but uh how excited are you for tomorrow I, you know, I, I think I told you earlier, uh, normally I, I love those later games, especially as a former coach when it was tough to catch those with uh, film and, and JV games and things on Saturdays. I love those later games. But now that I'm not coaching, I was looking forward to, to, to games anytime on Saturday, but I don't think I could have waited for an 8 o'clock game tomorrow. <laughs> I'm glad it starts at noon. We can get in there and watch some Buckeye football, and hopefully that goes well. Yeah, and then, of course, at night, the Yellow Jacket fans yeah. uh, might have something fun to watch. It uh, looks like Isaiah is number one on the depth chart yeah. again. Uh, and, and, you know, that's a guy that uh, made us look pretty good a couple years yeah, ago. He looked really good. <laughs> and uh, it was a lot of fun. A great kid. Uh, you know, uh, it looks like Devin Rogers is also going to get yeah, a chance to yeah, play for him. Uh, later on this fall. So it's good to see those guys get a chance to go at it. I know at one point there it looked like neither one of them was going to get to play football this fall. And uh, it's just good to see those guys get a chance. Absolutely. So we're nearing the start here. Uh, your keys to the game for the Yellow Jackets against the uh, uh, Butler Aviators. I, you know, I think the biggest thing is a good start. You know, I think we've proven to be a team that if we start well and we get feeling good about ourselves, uh, things go pretty well. We don't turn the ball over. But, man, if we have one of those bad starts, it's just one of those things that kind of snowballs. You know, some people call it quicksand or whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, things just uh, – they don't start well, and we, we don't always handle adversity well. And I think that's a key for the Jackets. Absolutely. So the teams are uh, going to the sidelines. I believe we're going to have the national anthem here in just a few moments. Uh, you can see the flag up there. Uh, I didn't see the coin toss. I don't know who's getting the ball first or anything like that. But uh, looking up there, uh, the flag, the wind's not whipping nearly like it was. You no, know, no. We, we've commented uh, several times this year about the great weather we've had. And this is really the first night where it's been questionable. But come kickoff time, it might not be too bad. Yeah, right now it looks pretty good out there. You know, as a former coach, I hated Friday nights when it rained, not just because of getting wet. I can handle that, but all the stuff that you put up on the sidelines and just everything you got going. And so, sometimes the player, some players hate playing in it. Uh, it's hopefully we can get through it and have a clean game and uh, just have a great Friday night here. Absolutely. So we're getting ready for the uh, national anthem here in just a second. Uh, we'll let you listen into that. And then we'll have kickoff between the – Sydney Yellow Jackets, 4-4, four and, four, and the Butler Aviators visiting at 2-6. and six. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We live in a country with freedoms like no other. We want to those and for those who continue to fight to preserve our way of life. Please remain standing for the playing of our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner.
Coach Ward. I don't know if you knew that, but that was a SHS grad. That's Dan Gutman. He oh, can wow. sing a little better than I can. Uh, Hall of Honor. Uh, no, no, not, not Hall of Honor, but, uh, yeah, great, great. Uh, Maybe someday. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe. Uh, sometimes the Gutman's tuned yeah. in, so uh, that, that, that family is very, very musically inclined. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's good because I am not. So that is uh, <laughs> definitely not one of my talents. I Looks like the Yellow Jackets are sending out, uh, I believe this is their, actually, I can't tell, their return team. So I think the Yellow Jackets are going to receive with the wind at their back. So Vandega Butler will be kicking from the north. I'm sorry, from the south to the north. Yeah. I've screwed that up about seven times this year. You're getting it now. Yeah, I'm getting closer. At least I caught myself <laughs> this time. Uh, looks like back to return for the Yellow Jackets. Uh, number 10, Jai Wheeler, along with number five, Isaiah Clark. And they're going to put their toes, it looks like, right at the 15-yard line, of course. Uh, not, a, not a real strong win, but we'll call it a stiff win that Vandalia is going to be kicking off into as they break the sideline and we get ready for football. We'll try to keep you updated on some of the games around the area. Of course, if you're watching from home or on your phone, you're probably either at one of those games or you can follow those on the Internet as well. But uh, obviously some pretty important games in the area um, going on. I know Fort Laramie still in the playoffs. Uh, uh, you've got some of our MVL foes in uh, Piqua and uh, I think I saw Tip is still slated to play tonight against okay. Baden. Yep. Uh, they were just on a delay. Here comes the kickoff. It's going to go on the ground. It's going to go right about the 30-yard line. Nobody picks it up. Kurt Spangler jumps on it on the 22-yard line and uh, thankfully the Jackets have the ball if you're a Sydney Yellow Jacket fan uh, but a little miscommunication there, not necessarily the way you want to start it, but it would have been even worse if they didn't get the ball. Yeah, I think uh, Coach Terry Ward was down there clear at the other end of the press box, and I could hear him yelling to get on that one. Uh, you know, that brings back bad memories from the Xenia game last year where Cindy kind of failed to get on one. So I, I always hold my breath every time uh, we have a kickoff. So good job by Vandalia to uh, give the Yellow Jackets not great field position at their own 23-yard line. Seth Johnson comes out with three receivers to his left, one to his right. And he's going to hand it off to Donovan Johnson. Johnson with his first carry of the ball game, sixth of the year, as he gets up to the 24-yard line for one gain. Yellow Jackets go off tackle to the left, and that will bring up a second and nine. Yellow Jackets starters at receivers at the top of your screen. You're going to see Avante Martin, Isaiah Clark, and Jacob Wheeler. To the bottom of your screen solo right now is Sam Reynolds. Ryan Jones doing the snapping duties for the Yellow Jackets as he snaps to senior quarterback Cedric Johnson. Johnson calls for the snap and gets it. Drops back to pass. Looks quickly for Sam Reynolds, but nothing there. Now he's going to hit late across the middle. Try an intended pass for Jacob Wheeler just off of his hands. So the ball was thrown into traffic, but said put it in a tight window there. Gave the Yellow Jackets a shot, but incomplete. Yeah, it looked like maybe they were they were either faking the screen there or trying to get it and it, a little miscommunication, but almost connected there at the end over the middle. But a uh, uh, third and uh, long here for the Yellow Jackets. Not the way they wanted to start. Hopefully they can convert here. Leading tackler for Butler, you'll see uh, middle linebacker number 44, Mike Masters. That's a good name, by the way. <laughs> I guess outside linebacker, Mike Masters, strong side linebacker. Johnson fakes name. a handoff. <laughs> Johnson fakes a handoff and has an intended pass on the screen to Avante Martin through his hands. So two passes that hit Riola Jacket receiver's hands. Both very tough catches. It would have been both incomplete, and that's going to bring up a fourth and nine, and here comes the punt team for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, you know, not a great way to start there. Just seemed like a little uh, little uh, miscommunications there, or just not quite hitting in sync. Uh, hopefully that's just a thing with uh, some different pieces in there, and they can iron that out here over the next couple drives. So back to punt. Wes Davidson, he has 20 punts on the year, just averaging over 30 yards a punt as long as 51. He gets the punt away after a good snap from Miles Watermark. Ball is bobbled by number 13, Kaysen Bennett, but he regains possession and is taken down. Nice good coverage tackle. by the Yellow Jackets. I believe that's Miles Watermark. He snaps it, and then he goes down and makes the tackle. And after a nice punt and good coverage by the Yellow Jackets, the Butler Aviators will take over on their own 39-yard line. Yeah, and, you know, he gets a free run down there. You know, they're not allowed yep. to hit him after he snaps. And uh, I don't know if everybody at home knows that, but he's uh, able to be the first one down there. But, uh, you know, that's a tough tackle when you have to break down and, and get, get a guy full speed like that. So the Butler Aviators. Pretty tight here. Break the huddle with a tight formation. Handoffs is going to go. We'll, we'll try to get some numbers here. Uh, looks like we have a new quarterback in there. That was number 19, Lucas Seibert. 
as he's going to come off the field. It's going to be a short gain on the play, gain of one. That's going to bring up second and nine as Butler makes some mass substitutions. Looks like Cody joins now. The junior quarterback is in there calling some signals. Looks like maybe they just tried something a little different there to give the Yellow Jacket something else to think about. Yep, maybe a special package. Drive starter, maybe. Yeah, there you go. So joins now. We'll take the snap. He has three receivers to his right, one to his left. He's going to throw a bubble screen out to the side. Ball is caught by number 16, Kyle Fulham. He works up the right sideline, just over the 45-yard line, near a first down. He's going to go to the 48-yard line, one yard short. Nice pitch and catch there from Fulham. I'm sorry, to Fulham from Joins, and that's going to bring up third and short. Yeah, it was a nice dive there at the end. I thought he might have got it, uh, but he came up a little bit short. Big chance for the Yellow Jackets to get, get off the, the field here and uh, get the ball back for the offense. Aviators break the huddle. They're going to come into pistol formation. Looks like they have a tight end to the left, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Snap is taken. Handoff is going to be just enough for the first down, it looks like, by number 28, Austin Flory, the freshman. Boy, it's close. Yeah, it is very close. I the tip of the ball short. had to get to the 49-yard line, and it looks like they are going to mark him a little bit short, so it's going to be fourth, fourth and about a foot for the Aviators. Near midfield, probably a pretty easy decision at this point in the year to go ahead and go for it. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it is probably an easy decision for them. I, you know, I've told you many know. times, I'm a coward. <laughs> for you. I, I punt it here, and, uh, but, uh, but uh, you know. When you only got a foot, you, you got to be able to get this in a game like this if you're going to win. Two receivers to the left, wing back to the left as well. Fulham gets the handoff, and he has plenty for the first down. Into Yellow Jacket territory inside, down to the 41-yard line. That's where his knee hit. So a nice gashing play there on first, on a fourth and one, excuse me, that's going to net about 11 yards and a first down for Butler. Yeah, I always knew you were smarter than me, so uh, <laughs> as evidenced by that play there. Nice run there by Austin Flory, the freshman running back. Butler with the first first down of the ball game. And, of course, there's the difference between the you know, the Yellow Jackets being in third and nine and Butler being in third and short. A little easier to convert, obviously. Yes, yes. Uh, a lot more options at uh, fourth and a foot than you have at third and nine. Empty set here for the Aviators as they're going to send Florian motion. He takes the jet handoff. It's nearly tackled by Kurt Spangler. Instead, he's going to work out inside the 40-yard line down to the 38-yard line where he's taken down by Camden Vordermark and Brian Jones for the Yellow Jackets. The clock is running, and that's four yards on first down. The Aviators had a, had a little trouble establishing the run game this year, but not here in the early going against the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, the Yellow Jackets are, you know, letting them uh, get a couple, you know, three, four yards a, a pop or more, and uh, they're going to have to stiffen that up here. Fake handoff. Pass goes out to Luke Mitchell. Mitchell makes a man miss, gets inside the 30-yard line for a first down, down near the 25 to the 26-yard line. It's going to be a gain of 11. And Luke Mitchell, you're going to hear his name a lot on offense, on defense, um, and on special teams. Kind of a do-it-all athlete for Vandalia. Nice pitch and catch there for the Aviators. And, of course, the Yellow Jackets had a couple short passes they weren't able to convert on. Butler is able to convert. Yeah, you know, and uh, the the Mitchell kid, when you were reading stats there before the game, I was starting to wonder if he caught the ball and threw it to himself and yeah. ran it. You know, uh, he sold popcorn at halftime. Yeah, exactly. There's motion by the wing back, flexing to the right. Handoff goes to Flory again. Nice gain on first down again as we get down, uh, as the Butler Aviators get down close to the 20 yard line. Going to set up a second and short. Gain of seven or six on the play, depending on how you look at it. And Butler, once again, establishing that run game in the early going. Yeah, it looked like there they had that motion, and they kind of ran a counter play back the other way with it uh, and uh, got some nice yardage there on first down. Just got a tweet notification that tip against Baden um, is actually going to be postponed until 12 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, man, you know, it's always tough to play those yeah. games on Saturday, especially a, a playoff game. Tight trips formation for Butler. Joins takes a handoff. He's going to run to the right behind Flory, he's going to pick up the first down down to the 15-yard line. So you tighten everybody up on one side and then run it with a your running back lead blocking to the right side, picks up the first down, and the Aviators are knocking on the door at the 15-yard line, first and 10. Yeah, the Yellow Jackets are going to have to come up with a big play here to keep them from uh, getting in the end zone here. Joins breaks the huddle. He's going to have a tight end to his left, two receivers to his right, pistol formation for number 28, Austin Flory. Handoff's going to go to Flory. He cuts back to the right side. He's going to get a couple and keeps pushing forward for three. As he gets down to the 12-yard line, 
It's going to bring up a second and seven after a gain of three. A little better job there by the Jackets of bottling things up. Yeah, they did a, nice, uh, a better job of getting a little penetration and uh, making sure they had him there right as the uh, hit through the line. So second and seven. Play clock is under 10. Butler does break the huddle as they intend to snap it. It looks like still under five. Two receivers to the right for Joins. He calls for the snap just in time. Drops back to pass. Throws it off to the left. Nice out route there. He's going to be run out of bounds by Kurt Spangler. The catch made by Kyle Fulham. Well, that's one of those plays that uh, if your precision isn't perfect on a passing and catching uh, situation, that could be six the other way. But a great out route, a great throw by Joins and a nice catch by Fulham. Yeah, hit him in stride, and uh, now that sets him up real well here at first and goal from the four. An impressive first drive for the Butler Aviators. The Yellow Jackets go out, go three and out after only gaining a yard, and the Aviators starting this drive near their own 40-yard line have marched it all the way down to the Yellow Jackets four as they look to punch it in for the first score of the ball game. Two receivers and a tight end to the right. That tight end's gonna go in motion to the left. Joins is gonna keep it around the left side. He's gonna be tripped up in the backfield. Nice play by the Yellow Jackets there. By number 44, Wyatt Biddle. Seeing some of his first action of the year on a Friday night. Nice play there by Biddle. Yeah, really nice penetration and good job to trip him up and uh, limit him to one yard there. I think I see, is that a, the officials are talking. Illegal sin, offense, five yard penalty, first down. So down in this area of the field, even with the nice defensive play, the Yellow Jackets elect to move Butler back five yards. That's going to bring up a first and goal from the nine-yard line. Yeah, you got to take that penalty there, get the yardage, and, and hopefully uh, get a couple good plays here to hold them to a field goal or less. Aviators break the huddle. They send number four, Ryan Wilson, out to the right. Tight end to the right, two receivers to the left. Flory in the backfield in the pistol formation. As he gets the handoff from Joins, he's going to work up the right side, right up the middle. Nice play there by the Jackets. They stiffen uh, on the tackle, in on the tackle, were several yellow Jackets, but Brian Jones and uh, Jaden Swiger were some of the first ones to get there. Only a gain of one, and usually when you hear those defensive tackles' names, it means a short gain for the offense. Yeah, yeah, usually when you get, uh, you know, one of those big guys in there on the tackle, usually it's not too far downfield, and uh, Yellow Jackets held them to one, so now they, uh, they're they putting a little pressure on them, second and eight, to so see what they can dial up here. So Yellow Jackets accepting the penalty obviously works out well. As they gain five yards, it would have been second and three. Instead, second and eight, second and goal from the eight. Joins, has two receivers to each side, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, throws it out to the right side, wide open as Fulham as he trots into the end zone just inside the right pylon. Nice pitch and catch, good play call by Vandalia as they take a six to nothing lead. Yeah, uh, really nice play there. Sorry about the camera work there, but uh, really nice play, you know, uh, good throw out there. He made, ran a red, good route and was wide open out there on the edge. So Butler with an early 6 to nothing lead on the 8-yard pitch and catch from Joins to Fulham. As they are huddling up here, we'll see uh, the ball is on the left hash, so I would assume to go for two. Uh, on extra points this year for Butler, they have Dylan Gross, who's gone 5 for 6, so I'm guessing they probably go for two a lot. Yeah. Three receivers to the right. Pistol formation for Flory in the backfield. Joins, throws it out to the left side, and that's going to be complete for the two-point conversion to Fulham. So the Joins to Fulham co uh, combination has provided us our first touchdown and two-point conversion. It's an eight to nothing lead for the Yellow, or for, I'm sorry, for uh, the Aviators here in the early going. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. So a nice first drive by the Aviators. Uh, Cody Joins goes five for five for 38 yards. 27 of those, excuse me, yeah, 27 of those go to Kyle Fulham, including the touchdown. And also on the ground, number 28, Flory, had seven carries for 27 yards. A little bit of run, a little bit of pass, 
Nice drive there by the Aviators. Yeah, you're going to put together a nice drive anytime you can get the ball uh, running, uh, rolling, running, and uh, you go five for five uh, throwing the ball. Kickoff once again is on the ground. This time the Yellow Jackets are going to pick it up a little bit closer to midfield at the 36-yard line. They're going to take over. That's Chris Hudgens covering it up. So the Yellow Jackets will have a first and 10 on the right hash. As they send their offense out, not a great first drive for the Yellow Jackets as they went three and out with two incompletions and a one-yard run. And this time, said Johnson, breaks out with two receivers to each side, and Donovan Johnson in the backfield to his right. Johnson calls for the snap, but not before some movement on the yellow jacket part. Looked like it was probably going to be a keeper for Cedric Johnson to the right side. Not a good way to start off your second drive there. Uh. So false start on the yellow jackets as they start from left to right on the offensive line. Isaiah Huggins, Michael Frank, Brian Jones at center, Keenan Johnson, and Jaden Swiger. A lot of those guys are going to be playing both ways tonight. Yeah, yeah. You're going to see a lot of Yellow Jackets doing that. Uh, you know, that makes things a little tougher, but uh, I know uh, they're up for it, and uh, hopefully they can hold things together. So first and 15 now, Donovan Johnson moves to the left side of Cedric Johnson. Johnson calls for the snap, fakes the handoff to Johnson. He's going to throw it to Wheeler. A little bit of a mix-up there. Wheeler gets up near the 30-yard line. He's going to lose two yards. Looks like the Yellow Jackets had two guys going for that pass on the screen play, which means one fewer blocker, and that's not a good that's not a good scenario. Losing two is probably um, uh, you know, not the worst thing that could have happened on a play like that. No, no, they're lucky that uh, you know they didn't get a tip there and or the ball go backwards and, and have a fumble. So uh, they'll line up for another one here and see if they can uh, get a little something going. So the Jackets going the wrong way. Second and 17. So they send two receivers to each side, said Johnson. Has Donovan Johnson to his right. Takes a snap, drops back to pass. Johnson looking to his left. He's going to throw it to Isaiah Clark just a little bit wide as it hits the ground, and that's going to bring up a third and 17. Good coverage on the play by number three, Matt Modern, number five, Mitchell Thomas. Third and long once again for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, you know, a little sign, uh, 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 one good sign that I did see there was Seth had some time, yeah, uh, you know, and uh, weren't able to connect downfield, but hopefully they can uh, get that in that time and they can find an open receiver here on third down. Two receivers to each side again for Cedric Johnson. Third and long as the Butler defense softens on the back end to prevent the first down. Johnson back to pass. Looking, plenty of time again. Escapes to the left, has Jacob Wheeler and hits him at the 45-yard line. Wheeler with the first down out across midfield down to the 47-yard line, 48-yard line into Vandalia territory. Give said Johnson that kind of time, and that can happen. Yeah, and the line did a great job. You know, that's what I kind of saw there the play before, and it, it, it really proved true there. Said did a nice job of just kind of moving, sidestepping in the pocket and uh, delivering the ball downfield, and that's what the Jackets needed. They needed something good to happen yeah. just to get to feeling good about themselves. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Johnson takes a snap, drops back to pass again. Looking, has a man over the middle, and Wheeler, Wheeler with a diving catch down at the 30-yard line. No, they're going to say he hit the ground. Oh. So Wheeler not able to come up with it. Uh, down 30 all in, but a great effort. Oh, so, sold out and just quite couldn't couldn't quite bring it in. And to your point, back to that third and 17 play. Uh, before the game, you said the Yellow Jackets needed off to a good start, and they obviously did not. Yeah. But uh, that was a huge play just from a momentum standpoint. Even if the Yellow Jackets don't uh, score here, you didn't want to give the ball right back to the Aviators. No, and, and they have at least uh, you know flipped the field a little bit here. That looks like they got something going maybe. Hey, Donovan Johnson takes the handoff as Butler blitzes hard off the right side, and the Yellow Jackets – Get an edge and get three yards, maybe four, down yeah. inside the 45-yard line. Uh, like set themselves up third yeah. medium. Looked like there might have been a little more there, but they, uh, they uh, nice tackle out there on the outside by the Vandalia defender. Two receivers to each side now, third and medium, called third and seven, right at the 45-yard line. Johnson dropping back to pass again, looking. Has a man, and it's Wheeler. Looking down the sideline, just on the outside, just outside of the outside, stretched hands of Wheeler as Wheeler dives again in an attempt to make a, a play, but the Yellow Jackets unable to convert. That'll bring up an interesting fourth and seven in this part of the field. Yeah, and I would, you know, I, I told you before I'm a chicken, <laughs> but I, I would expect the Yellow Jackets to go for it here, uh, you know, in response to how Vandaya handled it earlier. Sure, and just, and just because the Yellow Jackets leave the offense out on the field doesn't mean that they're not going to punt it. Said Johnson has punted this year uh, three different times for an average of 30 yards. You would anticipate the Jackets probably – as Cam Vordemark's going to check in for Jacob Wheeler to give him a blow after those two long plays. Uh, Yellow Jackets probably trying to get five, five free yards here and then wouldn't be surprised to see Seth Johnson punt it. Yeah. 
So the Yellow Jackets do have two receivers to each side, and they will snap it. Johnson back to pass, has to sidestep the rush, and doesn't sidestep the rush as number 50, Jalen Applegarth, the senior, with a big sack back into the Yellow Jacket territory, and Vandalia will take over at about the 46-yard line, 47-yard line, first and 10. And that's not what you wanted if you're the Yellow Jackets on fourth and long. But a nice uh, blitz call by Vandalia. Yellow Jackets couldn't pick it up. And a really nice play there uh, by Applegarth. Yeah, and it's really going to be important here to see how the Yellow Jacket defense responds. We need, they need to get a stop here and uh, get the ball back to the offense and hopefully swing that momentum the other way. Yellow Jackets make some subs on the defensive line. Zane Latimer uh, is going to be a nose along with uh, the ends, Michael Frank and Brendan Barnes. Three receivers to the right for Joins who has Flory in the backfield in the pistol formation. And his favorite target so far, Fulham, down here to the left. He's going to go to Fulham. He's going to be tackled by Grant Fair, but not before. A nice catch on first down. Gain of about nine yards. And that combination's been really, really good so far. Cody joins to look for his first name, Kyle Fulham. Yeah, they've done a nice job of just connecting and uh, getting the yardage that they needed. You know, not none of these have been huge, you know, huge yardage plays, but just moving the chains and uh, keeping it on offense and keeping the ball away from the Yellow Jackets. Four minutes and counting to go in the first quarter, a quarter that's been dominated by Butler, especially offensively. A long drive uh, mm -hmm. to, to open the game on their side of the ball as the Yellow Jackets went three and out to start the game. Two receivers to the left, wing back to the right. Flory in the pistol formation. He'll take the handoff, work off the left side. He's got the first down and more. Inside the 35 down to the 32-yard line. He's going to be taken down by Conley New, but not before. A nice gain of about six yards and a first down as Butler. A little bit of pass once again, a little bit of run. It's always tough to defend when the other team's balanced. Yeah, they're doing a nice job of mixing it up right now, and that really makes it tough on that Yellow Jacket defense. Butler looking to the sideline. Play clock goes under 20. They get the play call and break the huddle. Three receivers to the right. Two to the left, so an empty set. Flory's going to go in motion again, but they will fake the jet handoff, and they're going to throw it over the middle to Fulham. He's got it inside the 10. He's going to be tackled by Ken Vordermark down at the seven-yard line. So kind of a play off of a previous play where we saw the jet sweep earlier in the ball game. Faked that this time. Hit the vertical seam over the middle. Nice play call. Nice pitch and catch again from Joins to Fulham. Yeah, you know, they're, uh, that uh, Vandalia coaching staff right now is just pulling all the right strings. Yep. To, it makes it easier when you when you do have both uh, facets of the game going, and they, they do, and uh, they're making some nice calls right now. So first and goal from the seven-yard line, balls on the left hash. So we near three minutes to go in the first quarter. Butler ahead, eight to nothing on the scoreboard. Actually, we have Luke Mitchell. I don't know if he's been doing this whole – series or not, so I apologize if I mess that up, but Mitchell fakes the handoff. He's going to run over the right side near the goal line, get down to the two-yard line, down to the one. I think that might have been a special package there. I haven't been paying too close of attention, uh, but a nice run by Luke Mitchell. Uh, as we chronicled earlier before the ball game, not a stranger to playing quarterback. Uh, he play, he had actually played three full games at quarterback. Um, and there, takes the snap and runs off the right side, gets it down to the two-yard line. Yeah, I told you earlier I thought he was taking the snap and handed it <laughs> off to himself. Yeah, so. <laughs> pretty much did there. Pistol formation for Flory. Joins back at quarterback. He'll take the snap. He's going to hand it off. But this time there's nothing there. Let's see if the Yellow Jackets can hold as both sides are pushing on the line. Looks like it's going to be right back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of about a foot as they're spotting this one closer to the one. But the run by Flory does not net a touchdown. It's going to bring up a third and short, third and goal as the Yellow Jacket defense holds, at least so far. Yeah, and this is the type of situation where if the Yellow Jackets are able to get a stop here, it can really change the momentum in a game and really get a team going. And I, I think the Yellow Jackets need some sort of a spark route like that right now. Yeah, watch the tight end right now. Kyle Fulham is, at, is lined up at tight end. It's going to be a quarterback sneak, but the Jackets stuff it. Nice play there by the nose tackle. We'll see who that was. And then Conley New finishes it up. Uh, looks like uh, Connor Lindemann was in there as well, doing a really nice job. But a wonderful job by Brian Jones in the middle, stuffing that down for a short loss on the play. And that's going to bring up fourth and goal from the two-yard line. Great job there against the quarterback sneak. Yeah, it looks like those middle guys were able to get low, get underneath. And, uh, you know, we always say low man wins. I know that's a cliche, but it, it definitely holds true, especially down here at the goal line. So fourth and two, huge play in the ballgame at this point. Butler already leading eight to nothing as we approach one minute to go in the first quarter. Looks like Butler might let the play clock wind down and take a timeout here as the play has not come in yet. And that is indeed what's going to happen. So 
The clock stops with 105 to go in the first quarter. Big play coming up. Fourth and two from the two-yard line. We'll be back with that play in just a moment. All right, Coach Ward, big play coming up, fourth and two from the two-yard line. Uh, what do the Yellow Jackets need to do? You know, um, I think here it's very important to cover everybody up. I think they're, they're probably not just going to run it straight at them. They're probably going to try some sort of a you know, They a got a play down or, here, their favorite matchup down yeah. here on Grant Fair. And that's where they're looking. But the out route is uh -huh. just over the top. I don't think that that was the first move. I think that they wanted the same play as the touchdown play grant fair takes it away yep. uh, so they have to go to the back shoulder fade which is tough at any level but especially at the high school level nice play there by grant fair to get in position and at least make them go to their second choice yeah grant jumped it there and uh, did a nice job of that and made them you know you always want to take away their first option that's what they did there and it worked out for the yellow jackets now we got to see if we can get out of the uh, the uh, shadow of our uh, there's not a shadow really because we don't have uh, <laughs> yeah. the sun out or, or lights down that way but uh, get out of the end zone there the Yellow Jackets taking over on their own two-yard line. Of course, you worry about any type of safety here, including holding in the end zone. Said Johnson's going to keep it, work straight ahead, get positive yardage up over the five-yard line where he's stuck by number 44, Mike Masters. It's going to be a gain of four positive gains on first down, especially in your own end zone. You can never argue with that. No, you know, anytime you can get, uh, you know, a few yards there and uh, get yourself some breathing room, that's always a good thing down there in that end. We talk about uh, Isaiah getting the chance to play tomorrow, Isaiah Bowser, uh, the Sydney grad. I think he always used to like it when we get pinned down in the two-yard line because he saw more yards, I think. Yeah, so. well, you know, uh, you know, you always had those great play calls that were yeah. netted 98 yards and things uh, like that down there. There's going to be a false start by the Yellow Jackets. So uh, part of that gain on first down is going to come back the other way. It's going to be a half the distance, so the ball is going to be at the three-and-a-half-yard line. We'll see how good the officials are at math here. And that's going to put the Yellow Jackets back closer to the shadow of their own goal line. It's going to be about a second and nine now. Once again, mistakes at yeah. key points in the ball game, key spots in the field, and it bites the Yellow Jackets again right there. Yeah, the only good thing there is, you know, I mean, it's it's less than five yards, so you, you, you get a discount there, I guess, on that penalty. But uh, we'll see what the Yellow Jackets can do here. Donovan Johnson off to the right. Said Johnson drops back to pass. He's going to scramble to the right. He's going to get out of his own end zone, back to the line of scrimmage. So the Yellow Jackets, that's going to be a third and nine, and that's going to be the last play of the first quarter. So Yellow Jackets, deep in their own territory, are going to have a long third down play coming up as we start the second quarter and march all the way down to the other end of the field. Yellow Jackets hold on a second Vandalia drive to keep the score at eight to nothing after one. We'll be back with the second quarter in just a moment. So some stats in that first quarter. Yellow Jackets said Johnson, looks like he's two for seven for 22 yards. All 22 of those yards goes to Jacob Wheeler. Cody Joins, on the other hand, seven for eight for Vandalia. 72 yards passing, 61 of those to number 16, Kyle Fulham, as he has six catches. The other catch is by Luke Mitchell. He has one reception for 11 yards. Running the ball, Yellow Jackets, Donovan Johnson has two carries for five yards. And Vandalia led by Flory with nine catches, or I'm sorry, nine rushes for 34 yards. So big third and seven here from their own four yard line, Yellow Jackets. 
Send three receivers into the boundary, and now we're going to go to the wide side of the field, and Avante Martin goes up and catches the ball. Flag on the play. Doesn't look like, at least initially, that it was on the offense. Uh, the official is signaling on the defense. Pretty good coverage there by Mitchell Thomas, but that's just a guy going up and making a play in Avante Martin. Yeah, that's a really nice play there by a you know uh, Sydney guy that plays basketball, and uh, I think he used some of those skills there on that one and went up and got it. So eight to nothing, Vandalia leads, but a big first down. Big first down by the Jackets, and interesting how they did that there. They sent three receivers into the boundary to get the matchup they wanted to the wide side of the field. Nice job of manipulating the defense there by Coach DeVere. Yeah, really nice job of recognizing personnel and getting it to who they wanted. Two receivers to each side. Said Johnson's going to roll out to the right, looking like he's intending to run the ball, and he does so, and he's Ooh. stuck. Nice hit there by number one, Logan Caudill. It's going to be no gain on the play for Seth Johnson as the Yellow Jackets haven't been able to get the run game going yet, uh, but you got to keep trying it. Yeah, you know, it looked like they might have had maybe something there that might gain them a few yards, but, man, nice job there by the Vandalia defense of filling those holes and flying through there and making a nice tackle. Yellow Jackets still with four receivers on the field. I doubt we see that two-back set tonight. Yeah. Just joining us, no E.J. Davis, no Devin Taborn tonight. Two receivers to each side for Seth Johnson. He's got Donovan Johnson to the left. Kind of some movement there before the snap, and it looks like the Yellow Jackets are going to get marked back five more yards. Yeah, you know, and when you're already struggling, these uh, little mistakes just amplify everything going on. And, uh, you know, the Yellow Jackets could just kind of sure things up and, and just try to keep this drive going. Of course, yeah, as we went over the offensive line, some new names in there, yeah. at least from a starting perspective, but not guys Guys have played before. I mean, yeah, yeah, they have experience, you know, and, and been around the program for a long time, so you, you still expect them to, to be able to handle it in there. So Johnson's going to roll out to the left, throws on the run for Isaiah Clark, who slips and falls. Number 12, Luke Mitchell on the play with good coverage. Wouldn't have been enough for the first down, but would have been about third and five, but instead an incomplete pass, and the Yellow Jackets face with a third and long, third and 15. Yeah, again, makes this difficult here. Uh, Yellow Jackets are going to have to dial something up that they can uh, try to get 15 or at least, you know, any yardage you get here hopefully can help flip the field a little bit more. So we'll Last see what time, they can get. Butler only rushed three people. We'll see what they do this time. Uh, said Johnson was able to buy some time and then hit Wheeler for a first down. Third and 15 from their own 22-yard line. Donovan Johnson moves to the right side of said Johnson, who drops back to pass. Butler only rushing three again as a fourth comes late. Throw late over the middle is high for Avante Martin, intended for Avante Martin. That's going to be an incomplete pass, and the Yellow Jackets are going to be forced to punt. Yeah, and it's going to be a really important punt here for the Yellow Jackets to uh, get a good, not only a good kick, but also good coverage and uh, hopefully, you know, get them on their side of the field and, and get a stand and, and, you know, just try to keep this thing moving in the right direction. Yeah, and something, it probably means nothing, but, uh, you know, with the new rules and everything, I just saw the long snapper, Miles Vordermark, had to run all the way down and get the ball and that incomplete <laughs> pass and run all the way back. Uh, you know, that's that's a lot to ask and then make a perfect snap here, which he does. Uh, snap goes to Wes Davidson, who punts it away. It's going to be returned by Luke Mitchells. He catches it on his own 44-yard line and steps out of bounds just over the 45-yard line. As he's run out of bounds by number 17, Damon Dobbs along with the long snapper, Miles Vordermark. So a nice snap by Vordermark, another play by Vordermark on the punt coverage. And Vandetti is going to take over at their own 45-yard line, first and 10, another important series for the Yellow Jacket defense. Yeah, that, and that was a nice punt there. You know, he, he punted it towards the sideline, kind of limited his options there as far as running it back. And Yellow Jackets had nice uh, coverage there and hopefully set the defense up for some success here. So... Kyle Fulham lined up as a wing back. Now he flexes out, and they set him in motion. The handle's going to go to Flory. He's met right at the line. Falls forward for a couple, but a nice play there on the interior of the line. Miles Vordermark stepping up from the safe position along with Connor Lindemann, somebody, once again, the linebackers. We haven't heard a lot of these names before, but between him and Biddle, some pretty nice plays here in the early going for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, it's nice to see those guys making some plays and contributing, and uh, the Yellow Jackets are going to need it. Three receivers to the right. Joins calls for the snap, but freezes. Looks to the sideline for the call. He's got Austin Flory behind him in the pistol formation. Now moves to the right of Joins. Joins calls for the snap. This time he's going to throw it out to the right side to Luke Mitchell. Mitchell tries to make a man miss, but does not. Nice play there by Miles Vordermark to stay in front as Bo Davis comes in to clean up. Uh, short gain on the 
play out to the 50-yard line. That's going to bring up a third and five. Good job by the Yellow Jackets there of funneling everything in front of them. Yeah, they did a nice job of funneling and then also a good uh, pursuit and flow to the ball and a nice tackle. So big play, third and five from midfield. Butler Aviators are going to come out in a bunch formation to the left. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Joins calls for the snap. He's going to roll out to the left. Joins, plenty of time. Looking, throws across the body and throws a strike down near the 40-yard line. Nice throw on the run, rolling away from his comfortable hand. And uh, the pass goes to Luke Mitchell, and that's going to be a key third down conversion. Nice play there by the quarterback, Joins. That's a nice throw, like you mentioned, on the run there on the, on the, the tough side of the field. And uh, did a nice strike and uh, moved the chains for the Aviators. And not horrible coverage by the Yellow Jackets. No, not I mean, at all. Guy rolls out to his away hand and, and flips his hips and makes a throw on a dime like that. Sometimes you just tip your hat and get ready for the next play. Sometimes you do. You know, there were two or three Yellow Jackets there right around it, and just nice throw. One tight end to the left, three receivers to the right. Run's going to go to the left by the quarterback, Joins, and he's going to be tackled just past the line of scrimmage. A late penalty flag comes in. Really nice play there by Grant Fair, setting an edge. Looks like uh, we're going to get a holding call on Vandalia, but back to that last formation. We call that a nub formation in football with the tight end to the left. They're obviously trying to make your corner the edge player and trying to take advantage of that, but... Uh, Grant Fair did a nice job of uh, keeping that edge and making the play. You know, we mentioned uh, in the pregame uh, uh, Wheeler, you know, uh, uh, Jacob Wheeler doing a nice job of just always doing the right things, getting better every year. Grant Fair is the same type of player that's just done everything we, that's been asked of him and improved every year, and he's really been a key part of that defense this year. First and 19 now, back at the 50-yard line. Quick pass from Joins out to the left side is going to be completed to number 13, Kaysen Bennett. I believe that's his first catch of the ball game, maybe his second. Uh, this is the main targets have been Mitchell and uh, Fulham. It's going to be a short gain on the play, gain of five. It's going to bring up second and 14, second and 15. Uh, 14, excuse me. <laughs> so Butler just trying to get a little bit back each play, it looks like here, instead of trying to get all 19 at once. Yeah, they've done a nice job of that, you know, just kind of moving the ball down the field. Uh, Hopefully the Yellow Jackets can take an advantage of take an advantage take advantage of having two sticks here and, and get off the field. Tight formation again for Butler's. They have four wide receivers, but very very tight. Flory's going to move to the right side of Joins. Joins calls for the snap, drops back to pass. Looking over the middle, has a man and it's caught near a first down marker. Tight window there as it goes between Bo Davis, Grant Fair, and Miles Vordermark. That's just a great throw as the Yellow Jackets are right there. And a nice play on the catch, but that's going to bring up a third and short after a gain of 14, third and one. You know, man, he's done a nice job tonight of finding his guys, throwing it in some tight windows, and uh, even under pressure sometimes. Of course, you, you hear joints coming in with 11 interceptions, but uh, he's been on target and accurate tonight. Two receivers yeah. to the right, third and short. As Butler tries to draw off Sydney offsides, the Yellow Jackets do not jump on the play now here's the snap the handoff's going to go to Flory. he works off the left side and he's going to push forward nice surge at the end there by the aviators inside the 30 yard line down near the 28 or the 29 uh, looked like the Jackets had a chance there on that play, but the late surge uh, really got the Jackets, and that picked up three yards on a first down. Yeah, the Yellow Jackets have done a nice job on defense in those short yardage uh, situations, but that late surge really got the Aviators across the, the uh, first down marker, and uh, they'll line it up for uh, four new downs. So first and ten from the 29-yard line, balls on the left hash. Three receivers go out to the right. And the running back, Austin Flory, is going to be to the right of Cody Joins. Joins is going to hand it off to Flory. He's met right at the line of scrimmage this time by Brian Jones and Damon Dobbs, number 17. Two seniors making a really nice play. No gain on the play. That's going to bring up second and 10. Yeah, really nice play by some seniors there. And, uh, you know, that's what you want on first down to set yourself up for success on second, third down. Butler looking over to the sideline. For the second and 10 play call, of course, they've been a little bit of run, a little bit of pass tonight and done both fairly successfully. This time they're going to drop back to pass. Joins looking under pressure, throws it over the middle. It's going to be high and wide for the intended receiver, Kyle Fulham. That's really the first time that I can remember, at least Coach Ward, of the Jackets, you know, the, the bringing the blitz and getting some effective pressure. Didn't get to the quarterback, but certainly threw him off rhythm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm, I'm peeking over uh, – 
Mr. Ed Snyder's shoulder over here, and uh, you know that's only his second incompletion wow. of the night. So he's uh, done a great job of delivering the ball to his guys in some some tough situations. So third and ten, you would expect another pass here probably from Butler. Although uh, the other side of it is it could be uh, two down territory here, uh, kind of in that odd spot of the field. They didn't kick an extra point, so I'd assume they're not going to go for a long field goal. So four down territory is what you would assume for the Aviators as they send two receivers and a wing to the right. Mitchell takes the snap, and he's going to work off the left side, and he's going to get a lot of positive yardage. And Butler was thinking exactly that as he gets seven yards. Uh, that's going to bring up a fourth and short. Uh, you know, when you got to, when you know you have two plays to get it, uh, I think that every coach would take six or seven on that third down play to give yourself a pretty good opportunity on fourth and three, fourth and four. Yeah, and, you know, to be honest, I'm not sure if that was some uh, miscommunication there or what. It looked like he was carrying out a fake, but there wasn't a guy there. Yeah. So I don't know if that's just a uh, kind of a naked fake there. Yeah, sometimes, or sometimes you need your running back to pick up the opposite side, yeah. but you also need your quarterback to time up the play. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it was probably supposed to be that, but the running back saw he had to pick up the backside blitz or something like that. Yep. So it was a little awkward looking, but uh, certainly a nice good play success. for Vandalia. A little bit of a mix-up and rolling out to the right being chased by Bo Davis as the quarterback joins. He's going to throw toward the end zone. It's going to be incomplete out of bounds. A little bit of a miscommunication on the snap on the fourth and four play. Uh, looked like they were getting ready to send a guy in motion but never got it in motion. The snap comes. Bo Davis with some nice pressure from the backside forces the throw out of bounds and the Yellow Jacket defense bends but does not break. You know, and that's just another huge play by the Yellow Jacket defense there when they needed to. Uh, Vandalia's moved the ball quite a bit. Uh, I know the uh, the stat line's going to show at halftime that there's a huge discrepancy in terms of yardage but uh, Yellow Jackets are doing what they can to keep it close and uh, at the end of the game the only thing that matters is that score on the scoreboard. Well, if you're a Sydney fan, hopefully the discrepancy is not great because hopefully the Yellow Jackets can go yeah. uh, 75 plus yards here. We'll see. Uh, two receivers to each side for Sed Johnson as he drops back to pass. Getting some pressure. Forced to out of the pocket. Makes two men miss. Now he's working out across the 25 yard line. Out near the 30. He's going to run out of bounds. And the elusive Sed Johnson runs out of bounds right at the 30 yard line. Makes uh, something out of nothing there. Gets seven yards. And that's where having a quarterback with some elusiveness really, really helps. You mean to tell me you don't think they drew it up that way, uh, <laughs> Coach Schneider? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, really nice pressure there by number two, Chandler Perdue, uh, the defensive end from Butler. But said Johnson does a nice job to make a man miss. Second and three for the Jackets. Johnson calls for the snap. He's going to run behind Donovan Johnson, cut back to the right. Looks like he has enough for the first down, and he does as yep. the sticks are getting ready to move. So Johnson picks up four when he needed three, and that's going to be a first down for the Yellow Jackets as they uh, get this drive going with a nice first down on two runs. I was just going to say, yeah. uh, uh, a first down com uh, completely by the run running game. I know the, the first one's kind of a broken play, but, hey, right now the Yellow Jackets take rushing yards any way they can get them. Looks like the Yellow Jackets are going to – Balance out the formation with two receivers to each side. Martin and Clark into the boundary. Jacob Wheeler and Sam Reynolds up to the top of your screen. The pass is going to go to Avante Martin on the screen pass. He's got room out across the 40-yard line. Gets some nice blocking. Gets nine yards. And boy, they love throwing that screen into the boundary. It creates <laughs> some tight windows, but it also creates some, you know, some unique running lanes. And Avante Martin's really good at picking through those running lanes. Yellow Jackets going fast. Johnson back to pass, looking, looking, has a man off to the right in Martin just off of his hands near midfield. It's going to be incomplete and bring up a third and one. Yeah, I think the Yellow Jackets are trying to catch him off guard here a little bit, change up the pace, maybe change up the, you know, the uh, rhythm of the game and, and get something going. They just wanted to get that in before the review, right? That's Isn't true. That that's one? true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three receivers to the right for Zed Johnson. He's got Donovan Johnson to his left. We've seen a lot of Seth Johnson behind Donovan Johnson out of this formation, and we see it again, and he's met right at the line of scrimmage. But number one, Logan Caudill is going to be short, gain of maybe three inches or so, and that's going to bring out about a fourth and a foot. We'll see what Coach Dunn just and the Yellow Jackets decide to do. They're going to line up quickly, see if they run a play or try to draw the Butler Aviators off sides. Johnson, two receivers to each side, calls for the snap. And up top we have movement, and that's going to be a false start on the Jackets, and that probably makes the – uh, decision a little bit easier for Sydney. Yeah, I think you're right. I think they're trying to draw them off sides there, uh, but uh, it does make the decision a lot easier here. The last thing you want to do, you know, the first half hasn't gone the way you want, but you definitely don't want to give up an easy score here and, you know, take what is a one score game, and all of a sudden now you're down two scores going into halftime. Absolutely. 
And we'll see if Coach Dunn just pulls a Coach Fry and maybe did that on purpose so he can <laughs> fake this punt. Back to receive for number 12, uh, number 12, Luke Mitchell. Wes Davidson is going to take the snap from Viles Vordermark. Donovan Johnson, the running back, is back there and the next quarterback as well. And the snap goes to Johnson. He's going to run off the left side, and he's got the first down. Donovan Johnson out across the 45-yard line to the 48-yard line. And I should go to Vegas. You should, Coach. Uh, that was a, a great prediction there by you, uh, kind of prophetic. And, uh, you know, man, uh, takes a lot of guts to make that call, especially at this point in the game. But, you know, uh, I've told you before I'm a coward, but I love, I love the tenacity there and the chance to just go for it. And uh, they Absolutely. did a great job well, the good executing thing is, it. On a fake punt, it, the good thing you have in your advantage is they got one guy back. So you've got right. 11 on 10. Now, granted, you got your punter back there too. So it evens it up a little bit. But there is more space. So yes. you've got the opportunity yes. for some of those plays. And no matter what, you know, they're especially after the penalty, there's an element of surprise there. You sure. know, um, uh, yeah, some people might see that coming like you, uh, but not everybody has your insight. And uh, uh, they did a nice job of executing it. I know Coach Dungeons, as we've mentioned before, takes a lot of pride in that. He really evaluates each week the other team's uh, special teams and sees areas where maybe he can take advantage of. We saw a, a, a fake punt earlier in the year that was very, very successful. That one was in a little more of a dangerous situation <laughs> because the game was on the line against West Carrollton but also wide open. So that's two successful fake yeah. punts. Both of them run plays for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, and, you know, that one, those, both of those were just in, due to preparation before the game. Timeout by Butler, by the way. That was their second timeout. Said Johnson back to pass. He has a man. Devontae Martin streaking down the left side. Just oh. overthrown and out of uh, – is it falls to the ground and out of bounds. Pretty good coverage, actually, on the play by Logan Mason in the corner. Uh, but Vontae Martin beat him at the line of scrimmage. Uh, plenty of time, just a little bit long yep. there. The Yellow Jackets missed an opportunity for a big play. Yeah, and that would have been a huge one there right before the half. But uh, they've still got, uh, you know, at least two more downs here, uh, maybe three, uh, to give it a go and see what they can get going. You see, uh, you know, you got Jacob Wheeler diving for two passes uh, that could have been nice plays. And then just out of the outstretched arms of Vontae Martin there, seems like some plays are available for the Jackets on the back end. Fake handoff to Donovan Johnson said he's going to keep it. And he's not going to get anywhere, although there is a late flag on the play. We'll see if maybe they got the face mask or possibly an illegal block for the Yellow Jackets. And it is a hold on the Yellow Jackets. So Vandalia has an interesting decision here. Third and long or second and longer. Looks yeah. like they're going to march him back. It's hard not to take a, penalty, a holding penalty, I mean, when you – when you know that it's 10 yards. Yeah, and, you know, and now you're putting the Yellow Jackets uh, further back into their own territory and maybe giving yourself a better chance to get a score before the half. So Sydney's going to have now a second and 18 from the 40-yard line. Three receivers to the right in Reynolds, Clark, and Wheeler. Fonte Martin solo to the left. Johnson back to pass. He's going to escape up the pocket, but he's going to be taken down by... Number one and number 54, number one, Logan Caudill, and number 54, who I do not have on my roster. So I apologize for that. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we're going to call that a sack, probably a sack, a loss of one, bring up a third and 19. And, uh, you know, the Yellow Jackets look like they had a pocket there early, yeah. but Vandelli did a really nice job of shutting down that running lane, uh, as said, stepped up in the pocket. You know, it's one of those things the Yellow Jackets have been able to move the ball some at times, but they just can't develop a rhythm to get anything going and, and, and kind of connect the drive together. Johnson drops back the pass. He's going to escape to the right, looking for a man. He's got Wheeler, who has to come back for the pass, and that gives Butler a chance to recover. Nice play by number 25, Donovan Collins, the freshman defensive back, and the Yellow Jackets are going to be forced in the probably punt it this time. <laughs> I'll make a prediction, okay? I, I think they will punt it okay. this time. All right. Fourth yeah. and 18. Yellow Jackets, much better protection that time. Said bought some time, but by the time he bought that time, maybe just a little bit out of his range there on the throw. Yeah, yeah. Gave the other guys, like you said, some time to catch up, and uh, not a bad decision, you know, if they're, even if they yeah, catch it. you're right. Uh, probably not a, not a horrible situation, and a uh, little... <laughs> Pump by Davidson is going to be caught by Luke Mitchell in some traffic, and he's going to get positive yardage. He's going to work out across the 40 down to the 44-yard line. Nice, dangerous catch there by Luke Mitchell and a great run after the fact. Once again, a guy who's doing it on yeah. offense, defense, and special teams. That was an impressive play by Mitchell. Yeah, did a nice job of catching that in traffic and uh, making sure that he made the catch and then got something out of it. 
So Butler trying to expand on their lead. We haven't had a score since Butler's first drive of the ball game with just over six minutes to go in the first quarter. It's eight to nothing as we are nearing three minutes to go in the first half. Three receivers to the right, one tight end to the left for Joints who takes the snap. He's gonna hand it off to Flory. Flory working on the right side, gonna be taken down by Bo Davis, Brendan Barnes, Connor, I'm sorry, Zane Latimer, and a host of Yellow Jackets. Short gain on the play, we'll call it a gain of one. It's going to bring up second and nine from the 45. Yeah, nice job by the Yellow Jackets there at the, the point of attack, and uh, that's what they need is to, to I think if they could make uh, Vandalia one-dimensional, they, they'd have a lot more success out there. Of course, still 2.30 to go in the half, so the run game and the pass game open for Butler, but you would expect them to pro probably start moving a little bit quicker here and throw the ball as they send Luke Mich Mitchell in motion from left to right. He's going to get the bubble screen pass from Joins. Mitchell working up the left side. They're going to be taken down by Carter Elsner. Nice play by Elsner as he keeps the defender, or I'm sorry, keeps the offensive player in bounds. And also, I'm afraid if Carter doesn't make that play, there's not a whole lot of help behind him. Yeah, you know, Yellow Jackets had pursuit over there, but it looked like he was uh, getting to the edge, and uh, Elsner might have been the only guy there that could uh, bring him down. So third and three into Jacket territory at the 49-yard line as we go under two minutes to go in the first half. Butler looking over to the sidelines, still certainly not playing fast yet. They're probably waiting to see if they get this first down. Yeah. And then we'll... Switch it into overdrive, maybe. Yep, yeah. I would assume so. So two re two receivers and a wing back to the right. Joins calls for the snap. He's going to hand it off to Flory. Flory working off the left side. Looks like he's going to be short, maybe a yard short, as he's tripped up in the backfield by Lineman and then taken down by Conley New. It's going to bring up fourth and one in a very interesting decision here for Butler. As they, if they snap this uh, for the play, that's going to be with about a minute. You would probably expect them to try to draw the jackets off sides and then maybe take their last time out. But just when teams are thinking that, you snap the ball. So we'll see what Joints does. Calls for the snap. And there is not one as they look over to the sideline. Play clock working toward 10. And they do snap it. Hands it off to Flory, who has enough for the first down. But there is a flag that comes in on the play in the area of holding or illegal blocking. And it looks like we've got a hold on the Aviators. And that changes things with just over a minute to go. That's going to make it fourth and 11 instead of first and 10 for Butler. Yeah, uh, that was uh, the big call there for the Yellow Jackets. Uh, you know, they get that. If uh, Vandelli is able to convert that play there, uh, you know, I think they do jump into overdrive and try to get a score there before the half. We talked about the Yellow Jackets having timely penalties. Well, <laughs> I, I should say not timely penalties. That one obviously works in their favor yeah. against Butler. It's going to be fourth and nine, actually. I said fourth and 11, but the penalty occurred a yard or two downfield. Snap goes back, and we got a rugby style punt by Luke Mitchell. It's going to be caught by Isaiah Clark with rim to run. Uh, Clark. Works out to the 30-yard line, and he's going to be taken down right at the 30. Nice play there uh, to prevent an even bigger return by number nine, Demarcus McKinney. Looks like the Yellow Jackets had something yeah. there. They were maybe one block away, but might have had something to the other yeah. side there. But, yeah. uh, you know, when you call return right, yep. you, you, you know, you go return right. But the Yellow Jackets, nevertheless, defense, you can't say enough after that first drive of not looking great for the Yellow Jackets have really uh, kind of been in bend but don't break mode, but some key stops to keep the Yellow Jackets in the ballgame so far. I know, I know that's something that's always been very important for Coach Holman, getting off the field when you have the opportunity, and they've done that in the right instances tonight. Said Johnson, see what the Yellow Jackets do here. Drops back to pass from his own 28-yard line, steps up the pocket, and looking deep. Johnson looking for Clark, but it's going to fall to the turf as he was rerouted on the play by number three, Matt Motter. Good job by Motter to not give Clark a free reign getting down the field. Thus, the timing was a little bit off and just overthrown, but the Yellow Jackets not sitting on it here no. trying to attack. Nope. Yep. Uh, it's pretty obvious in this game. You know, the Yellow Jackets are going to leave it all out there and uh, be uh, be aggressive the whole time, and they've, they've shown that, and they're going to continue to be. And, and part of that might be, number one, they have had opportunities down the field and mm -hmm. just haven't converted. But number two, they also have to kick off to start the second yeah. half. Yeah, yep. Vandalia switching the, their defensive line to the strength. It's going to be a short pass this time to Avante Martin. He's got room. Martin across the 40, out near midfield. Maybe a face mask on the play. That we are going to get it. A late flip penalty flag comes in. Yellow Jackets look like they caught Vandalia with not enough numbers down here that time. Nice pitch and catch from uh, 
from Johnson to Martin as the Yellow Jackets getting ready to move quickly after probably a 15-yard penalty here. Yeah, and, you know, the screen game's been a big part of their offense all year, and I think it's going to continue to be maybe even more so now with some changes at running back and things like that. Yellow Jackets with three timeouts remaining in their pockets, 32 seconds. As they're with the stoppage of play, they're ready to run a play, so they'll save those timeouts. And obviously that means the middle of the field is open. There's the snap from Seth Johnson. He drops back the pass. And the pass is going to be incomplete, intended for either Clark or Martin. Little miscommunication there. Pretty smart, by said, to call for the snap before the whistle. Yeah. That way, when the whistle comes, you're ready to snap it right away. Four seconds come off the play clock, or I'm sorry, off the game clock, and that's going to bring up a second and ten as the ball falls falls harmlessly out of out of bounds in the Yellow Jackets. Probably looking to pass it here, right, Coach Ward? Yeah, I would think so. I've, I've guessed wrong a lot tonight. But uh, <laughs> I think here, though, they will be looking to uh, throw the ball. Johnson drops back to pass. He's got Clark on the sideline. Runs out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Nice, modest gain on first down. Of course, the Yellow Jackets do have a nice field goal kicker, Carson Taylor. It's going to bring up third and three, 24 seconds still on the clock. And the whole playbook still available with those three timeouts. Even a run here on third and short. Yeah, with three timeouts, anything's in the, in, in the game here. Uh, just got to make sure you get that first down. A little bit of a weird start to the play. Johnson rolling out to the right, sets his feet, has a man looking for the pylon. It's going to be incomplete for Wheeler. There is a penalty flag on the play. Looks like maybe defensive holding or pass interference as Wheeler was trying to make his break. Really nice play call there by the Jackets. Caught him in man coverage and had a matchup that they liked. Yeah, and, you know, they've had – I think they're seeing some things that they can take advantage of. They just haven't been able to connect on those deep down the field throws yet. It is indeed going to be holding on the Aviator defense. And with the incomplete pass and the previous play out of bounds, no doubt that the clock will not start yet. Of course, you'd expect any timeout, even if it is a first down right now, yes. probably a timeout after every play now. And most likely, Yellow Jackets have three, four plays yep. here to, to get a score. 17 seconds. Yellow Jackets down to the 14-yard line. They're deepest move into Butler territory. Johnson has two receivers to each side. Calls for the snap from Brian Jones. Drops back to pass. Johnson looking for the end zone for Avante Martin. Martin goes up and doesn't get it. It's actually picked, but out of bounds. Uh, Logan Mason, Martin had it, and then Mason took it away. But all of that happened out of bounds as Martin was trying to get his feet down. And that's going to bring up a second and 10 from the 14-yard line. Five seconds come off the clock, so still 12 seconds remaining. And I apologize, we run into the, the edge of the window here a little bit, getting our <laughs> camera adjusted, but uh, we'll get this ready for your second down play here. Looks like the Yellow Jackets, we'll see, are indeed going to call a timeout. And, uh, you know, we don't always recognize it, but uh, as you can see, when you get close to the lights there, it is starting to rain pretty hard again here at yeah. Sydney Memorial Stadium. Of course, that could affect the passing game a little bit, yeah. but with the timeout, the Yellow Jackets are able to clean the ball off. Boy, this would be huge if the Yellow Jackets, from a Sydney perspective, if the Yellow Jackets can uh, put some points on the board here. Of course, you don't want three. You, you, you want seven or eight or six or whatever you can get. Uh, but the Yellow Jackets, really with a nice drive here, moving the ball through the air for the most part. Yeah, they got to get points. Uh, you know, you, like you mentioned, you, you really want the touchdown, but you got to get points here so you feel good about yourself going into halftime. And, of course, as you can tell, the rain coming down pretty heavily now. Uh, so just in time as the Yellow Jackets enter the red zone. So they have it on the left hash. Sydney will send two receivers to each side. Said Johnson has Donovan Johnson to his right in the backfield. Vendelia Butler really widening out their defensive linemen. They get a blitz up the middle with Caldell. Johnson look for the end zone. Has a man wide open. Isaiah Clark comes down with it. Touchdown, Man. Yellow Jackets. Big play there. Johnson to Clark from 14 yards. Really nice play call there by uh, Coach Devere is fake, fake some things that they do early, uh, a lot earlier in the ball game underneath, and Clark comes open over the top, and the Yellow Jackets are going to go for two maybe. We'll see here after the timeout. But you a know, really nice play by the Jackets. Yeah, and normally, you know, Yellow Jackets, I know Coach Dunge is going to take a timeout here to talk about it, but, you know, normally C Coach Dunge would always just kick, kick yeah. the extra point here. But with the weather the way it is, uh, you know, scoring's been in a premium, maybe he decides to go for two here because you don't know how many chances you are going to get tonight. That's a great point. And, uh, of course, with the band not being here uh, t tonight, uh, you know, when, when it comes time to halftime, we're going to – play our levy spot and then we'll we'll take a few minutes off we'll come back we'll give you some halftime stats maybe some scores from area games 
as a lot of games have kicked off and the rain looks like it's slowing down a little bit now. I think I looked at the radar earlier um, and it looked like maybe we had this one uh, and then I think we're clear the rest of the night. So hoping the Yellow Jackets can get this one in. It's been a great ball game so far. Uh, eight to six is the score as the Yellow Jackets are going to send out the offense and try to tie this thing up. I'm a little disappointed that we're not going to get a little karaoke from you here at halftime when uh, the, with the band not being out there. There, so. there are some things I can do, and there are <laughs> many things I cannot, and singing is one of them. So, Two receivers to each side for Johnson. So he has Donovan Johnson to his right. Said calls for the snap, fakes the handoff, has Wheeler over the middle and hits him. Johnson to Wheeler for the two-point conversion, and we're all tied up. Six seconds to go in the first half, and how huge is that for the Jackets? Oh, boy, you know what? Uh, Honestly, if you, you just had somebody watch and you, you didn't show them the scoring plays and you just saw yeah. how the game had gone up to this point, they'd probably think it was a, a two, maybe even three score game. Uh, Yellow Jackets have done a nice job of leveraging the big plays and uh, and then turning them into uh, positive plays for them and uh, got it tied back up here right before halftime. Short yardage defense has been phenomenal uh, tonight. It, ha it has. Um, you know, um, it, those are always key plays, uh, but they've just done an especially good job tonight and uh, tied it back up and uh, – Hopefully the uh, kickoff goes well here, no, no big problems, and uh, we, we start it back up in the second half, uh, all tied up. Yeah, and, uh, you know, usually the Yellow Jackets are the team that's typically the more balanced of the two teams in the ball game that they're participating in, but tonight they've been a little more pass-heavy, yeah. and it looks like Butler's really stuck to that balance. Um, two different approaches, but really kind of the same result right now. Yeah, I think Sydney's still trying to find its identity with the running game with some changes in there, but uh, been able to get the passing game going, and uh, Butler is the one that's really been uh, very balanced. So the ball blows off the tee. Usually they'll let you have one more shot at that. Is The wind is definitely whipping a lot more. They usually let you try twice to kick it off without somebody holding it. Just another thing you got to practice, though, yeah. when you have to have somebody come in and hold it. Everything's a little bit different when you got weather like yeah, this. Yeah, it is. And the ball does blow down, so this time Donovan Johnson's going to come in and hold it for Carson Taylor. And that just makes it a little more 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 difficult in your coverage because now you got a guy that's, you know, starting to play off, kneeling down, and yeah. you know, it takes him another second or two to get up and get to full speed. Sure, he's probably the safety, but yeah. still. Carson Taylor tees it up at the 40-yard line. This time he'll approach and will kick it. Ball's on the ground, a squib kick. It's going to be picked up by Vandalia right about the 23-yard line. Caudill is going to work off, off the left side across the 35-yard line to the 37 where he's taken down, and that's going to end the first half. 8-8 eight to eight is your score. Pretty competitive first half, Coach Ward. Uh, Butler owns the first part of the half, but a big drive there by the, at the end by the offense to tie things up. Yeah, and we talked about it pregame. You know, we, the Jackets did not come out like we talked about. It wasn't a good start, but what they were able to do is overcome some adversity and get it tied up by having some big plays there right before the half. 8-8 eight eight is your halftime score. We're going to step aside for a few minutes, play our levy spot, and we'll be back with some halftime stats, some scores from other games. Once again, 8-8. Eight to eight. Jackets and Aviators tied at halftime. Thanks for joining us. On Tuesday, November 3rd, Sydney City Schools will be asking voters to pass, for 10 years, a $7.3 million emergency property tax levy to generate $3.5 million necessary to support school operations. This levy will continue to support the day-to-day -day operations of our schools, such as staffing, utilities, and supplies, and help offset the projected deficit we show in our five-year forecast. It will help us maintain the excellent programs we currently have and help us keep the focus on academic growth moving forward. It is well known that strong schools are vital to a strong community and vice versa. Please help us make Sydney a stronger and more vibrant community by supporting our schools.
Okay, welcome back to Sydney Memorial Stadium and 30 and 0 Field as we're halftime with the Sydney Yellow Jackets and the Butler Aviators tied at eight. Uh, Vandalia got on the scoreboard first on a pass from Cody Joins to Kyle Fulham. Uh, I think it was about an eight yard catch with 6.06 to go in the first quarter. The two point conversion was also good from Joins to Fulham, uh, that making it eight to nothing. Then we didn't have any scoring until six seconds left in the first half when said Johnson found Isaiah Clark from 14 yards out for the Yellow Jackets score. And then the two point conversion from Johnson to Wheeler tied the game up at eight. And that's where we stand at halftime as we get one minute before the three minutes that they're going to put on the scoreboard for the teams to warm up. So we're about four minutes from the second half kickoff, which will be the Yellow Jackets kicking off to the Aviators. From a statistical perspective, said Johnson went eight for 21 for 101 yards, one touchdown and no interceptions. Rushing the ball for the Yellow Jackets, Johnson ran eight times for five yards, and Donovan Johnson ran three times for 16 yards. So the Yellow Jackets not able to get the run game going yet, uh, but that last drive was key, and all of that was through the air. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, a lot of yards through the air there on that last drive, and the one big penalty, I, I think that really set the Yellow yep. Jackets up with, you know, gave them enough time and the plays that they could, they had a lot of options there and really set them up for success there right at the end of that drive. Receiving the ball for the Yellow Jackets, Avante Martin, three catches for 55 yards, Jacob Wheeler, three catches for 25 yards and a two-point conversion, and Isaiah Clark, two catches for 21 yards. Yellow Jackets had five first downs, Butler had seven in that first half. For Butler on the offensive side, Cody jo joins 12 for 15 for 109 yards and a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Uh, he was mighty impressive and very accurate in that first half. Yeah, we've seen some impressive quarterbacks this year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I thought that first half play by him was right up there with any of them, you know, probably with the court, the pickle quarterback. Uh, for uh, But the accuracy there in the first half is what really struck me for uh, joins. Absolutely. Number 28, Austin Flory. Has 14 carries for Butler for 43 yards. Luke Mitchell has two carries for 11 yards. And joins the quarterback has two carries for four yards. Receiving, main target has been number 16, Kyle Fulham, as he has the touchdown and the two-point conversion. Seven catches for 77 yards. Also, Luke Mitchell, four catches for 30 yards. And number 13, Kaysen Bennett, one catch for five yards. Big story in the first half. Um, not a lot of turnovers or anything, but penalties. Now, both sides with five. But the Yellow Jackets have five penalties for 26 yards. Butler has five penalties for 52 yards. So twice the number of yards and also the timing of those. Yeah. You talked about the you talked about the uh, the face mask on the jacket scoring drive, which was huge, but also to set that up, the 10 yard holding penalty when they had a first down down to the 30 yard line was big on the previous drive. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, then uh, also the uh, the holding call yeah. there in that last drive. Uh, just a lot of things that really helped the Yellow Jackets, you know, uh, up until that last drive. Pretty good discrepancy in yards, but with the penalties and then the uh, the nice drive the Yellow Jackets put together, it got a little closer there at the half. Yeah, by our account, uh, by our unofficial account, by my dad, Ed Snyder, thanks for the stats. Uh, Yellow Jackets getting out gained by 50 yards or so in that first half, maybe closer to 40. But before that last drive, it was probably, I mean, it was yeah. about, it was a lot more than that, about 125 yeah. yard yeah. difference. Yep. All right, so we're getting close to a minute to go here in uh, halftime. We'll play our levy spot again real quickly, and then we'll be back for the second half. The Yellow Jackets will kick off to the Aviators. We're all tied up at 8. On Tuesday, November 3rd, Sydney City Schools will be asking voters to pass, for 10 years, a $7.3 million emergency property tax levy to generate $3.5 million dollars necessary to support school operations. This levy will continue to support the day-to-day -day operations of our schools, such as staffing, utilities, and supplies, and help offset the projected deficit we show in our five-year forecast. It will help us maintain the excellent programs we currently have and help us keep the focus on academic growth moving forward. It is well known that strong schools are vital to a strong community and vice versa. Please help us make Sydney a stronger and more vibrant community by supporting our schools. Okay, we're getting ready for the second half kickoff. Some scores from other games. Um, the Max playing, but not a lot of other people are playing right now. They're either postponed until a later date or uh, canceled because of COVID. 
or there have been a couple that haven't made a decision yet. I saw the Troutwood Alter game hasn't made a decision yet. Uh, but long story short, in the MAC uh, so far, we've got New Breedman leading in the third quarter against St. Henry. That's a playoff game, 14-7. to seven. Uh, Delphi St. John's is beating Pandora Gilboa 14 to 7 in the third quarter. That is not a playoff game. And in another playoff game, surprise, surprise, Marion Local ahead 35 to nothing on New Miami. Those are all Division 7 scores. Uh, I saw that the St. Mary's game, I believe, was postponed. The, uh, I haven't seen it. Did you see anything on the Tip Baden game yet? I think uh, that no. was postponed as well. Till, yeah, that was the one that was tomorrow at 12 yeah, o'clock. Yeah, so. That's right. So a lot of games getting affected by the weather, by sickness, uh, by just a lot of different things. And we're fortunate enough to watch one here tonight, the Yellow Jackets and the Aviators. 8-8 eight eight as we get ready for the second half kickoff. Carson Taylor is going to go back for his second kickoff of the game. His first one was just a squib kick with six seconds left in the first half. This one is going to go much deeper. In fact, it's going to go over everybody's head and land midway through the end zone, hit the H in Lehman, bounce out of bounds out of the back of the end zone, and that's going to be a touchback. We say it a lot, but what a great weapon to have. Yeah, he's been a great addition to the team this year, and uh, hopefully that continues into next year. He's able to do the same thing and, you know, be a uh, That's nice, right. he's nice only part, a junior. Yeah, be a nice part of this Yellow Jacket uh, team. Of course, uh, Carson Taylor on the boys' soccer team who fell to one of the best teams in the nation yeah. in yeah. Beaver Creek, but a wonderful season by the boys' soccer team. And the girls' soccer team, a big match uh, tomorrow. So we wish good luck to the girls' soccer team as they're still in tournament action. Handoff to start the second half is going to go to Flory. He spins out of a tackle, works out uh, for an extra yard to the 24-yard line. Gain of four. Looked like the Yellow Jackets had him for a stop of two, but a nice effort there by Flory to get a couple extra. Yeah, kept moving the feet there, and uh, some other guys kind of contributing in there, maybe pushing a little bit, and uh, turned it into a nice uh, four-yard gain. It used to be illegal to age your yeah, own runner. Yeah, they well, gotten rid of that completely. Well, even when it was illegal, it wasn't yeah, illegal if you were anyway. USC. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Matt Leiner made a living on it. Three receivers to the left for Joins, who has uh, Flory in the pistol formation. One receiver to the right, Ryan Wilson. They're going to move Flory to the left side. Joins calls for the snap. A little bit of a high snap. He's going to throw a quick screen out to Mitchell. The ball's going to bounce. Thought it was a short hop. Maybe I was wrong. <laughs> Nobody seems to be arguing, so I must not be able to see. Is That's going to be a gain of about four yards on the play, and that's going to bring up a third and one. Uh, Luke Mitchell on the catch, four yards, just a minute into the second half. And a big third and short for the Aviators. Usually you would count these as golden if you're on the offense, but the Yellow Jackets have been pretty stingy on short yardage so far. I really think that, you know, some of those stops they had there on short yardage was what kept them in that first half until they were able to get that last drive together. Butler breaks the huddle. They're going to send two receivers to the left, a tight end to the right. That's Fulham. Flory in the backfield. He takes the handoff. He's going to have the first down. Works up across the 30 down to the 33-yard line. Good solid four-yard gain when they only needed one. That'll be a first and 10. Good surge there by the Butler offensive line. Yeah, absolutely. Yellow Jackets sending out a defensive line to start the second half of Keenan Johnson, Brian Jones, and Jaden Swiger. The, back, the linebackers, Kurt Spangler in the middle, Bo Davis and Connor Lineman, along with uh, Damon Dobbs on the outside. The secondary... Mm -hmm with the Vordermark brothers at safety, and then Grant Fair and Carter Elsner at the corners. Three receivers to the right for Butler, one to the left. Flory in the backfield, he'll take the handoff. He's gonna be met in the backfield by Bo Davis. That's gonna be a loss. Loss of two or three on the play. Looks like a loss of two. It's gonna bring up second and 12. Bo Davis on the blitz. Catches the Vandalia defense off guard and makes a nice play in the backfield. Yeah, it's always great to get that penetration, but he did a nice job of wrapping up and making the play behind the line of scrimmage, and that really helps set him up for success uh, with the, the uh, second down here. Maybe some light rain uh, coming yeah. down as we don't see many umbrellas out anymore. So if it is still raining, it's not much. The wind is still a bit of a factor as Vandalia Butler is going into the wind right now. They'll have the wind with them in the fourth quarter. Joins calls for the snap. Short set, he's going to throw it out to the right. Wilson catches it, but with a knee down, so he can't make the move unless he was in the NFL. It's going to be a short gain on the play. It's going to bring up third and medium. Even though it was only a gain of five or six yards, still a pretty nice positive play when you're behind the sticks to get yourself a good opportunity with third and medium. Yeah, and that was a really nice throw there. You know, he delivered it right on time. I think he even caught the receiver off guard with how quickly he got the ball got there after out of his break. And I think that's kind of why he got down on the knee. Uh, but a uh, really nice throw and uh, big third down play here. Big play for the Yellow Jacket defense. You're right. Third and six from the 37-yard line. 
Butler's going to send out a wing to the right along with one receiver and two receivers to the left. Joins, drops back to pass, short set again. He looks for number 13 and has him. Kaysen Bennett spins out of a tackle and is going to be taken down by Carter Elsner and Bo Davis out at midfield. And that's going to be a first down, double slants down here. Uh, hit uh, Bennett on the back shoulder. He spins out of it, gets some yards after the catch. Nice play by uh, the Aviators on third and medium. Yeah, and you know they, he went to a uh, uh, you know a familiar target there for him on a on a big play, and that's what you like to see if you're an Aviator fan. So first and ten, right at midfield. Just like the first drive of the ball game for Butler, which was the second drive of the game overall, but their first drive marched down the field. Doing the same here to start the second half. There's going to be a quarterback sweep to the left. Joins, he works out near a first down. It looks like he has it to the 40-yard line. Once again, that same formation you see. You get the tight end over here. Get some edge players that you don't normally see with no receivers over here and three receivers to the right. And a really nice lead block there by the running back, Austin Flory, and Joins sticks his head in there and gets 10. Joins did a nice job of getting right behind that lead blocker, like you mentioned, just made himself tough to find. And, uh, you know, Yellow Jackets were finally able to bring him down, but not before the first down. Yellow Jackets make some subs on the defensive line as Michael Frank, Zane Latimer, Brendan Barnes are now in the ball game. Two receivers to the right for Butler. They're going to send full on the tight end in motion. He'll pick up a key block on the right side, and there goes Flory around the right side. He's going to have another first down right at the sticks, down to the 30-yard line. So they have it at the 50, gain exactly 10 yards to the 40, and then exactly 10 more to the 30. And Butler finding something on the ground here to start the second half. Yeah, they definitely uh, got the edge there, and uh, nice blocking, and uh, another good first down for the uh, Aviators. We haven't called his name yet. I was hoping to call his name a couple times so we give him a shout out. But Kurt Spangler leading the league in interceptions. Yeah, yeah, he's just done a tremendous job. Uh, Four picks on the year. That's what happens when you put yourself in the right spot, right? Yep, absolutely. Uh, Joins hands it off to Flory. He works around the left side, breaks out of a tackle, and he's going to get exactly ten more. Uh, actually, this one's a little bit short, so we're going to get nine yards. So actually, no, they're moving it. So ten yards, ten yards, ten yards. Hopefully at some point they stop getting 10 yards on every carry. You know, they, it's real nice when you can, you know, make whatever kind of running call you want and get 10 yards and get a first down. Uh, you can move down the field pretty quickly doing that. And Austin Flory only listed as a, uh, as a freshman. Uh, Good-sized kid for a freshman and certainly a hard runner. Yes, absolutely. Uh, getting the tough yards in there. Uh, make Butler, it a and Butler's known for that too. Yeah, yeah. They've had some really good running backs over the years. Fulham goes in motion from left to right. The handoff's going to go back to Flory. Makes a nice cutback to the left side. The Yellow Jackets won't let him get 10 this time, but they do let him get five positive yards on first down, down to the 15-yard line, just inside the 15, it looks like. And that's going to bring up a second and medium. Nice little jump cut there by Flory. Yeah, you know, hit the button there on the, the joystick and uh, got a nice move and uh, an, an, another good first down run. Another drive that's going to take uh, nearly half of the first quarter for Butler. Actually, it's going to be over half of the uh, yeah. third quarter. Excuse me. First quarter of the second half. Two receivers to the left, wing to the left as well. They're going to send Fulham in motion again. Handoff's going to go to Flory this time, and he's going to get a first down inside the 10 down to the 8-yard line. Maybe the 9, we'll call it. And, uh, you know, just something small there. They've been doing that play where they send Fulham in motion to the right, and he seals the edge. This time they send him to the right, and he comes back to the left side, becomes the lead blocker. Looks very similar to what we used to do with Devin Rogers, but it's been very effective for Butler here to start the second half. Yeah, and, you know, I've been wrong on a lot tonight, but I, I think, you know, I would be surprised here if the Aviators threw the ball at all, you know, until they're stopped. You know, they've had such good success running the ball here. I think they're going to run it till the Yellow Jackets make them throw it. Been a lot of Austin Flory, a little bit of Cody Joins here on this drive on the ground. The handle's going to go to Flory again. He cuts back, and he's met right at the line of scrimmage. Bo Davis doesn't give any ground on that first contact. Short gain of maybe a foot on the play. We'll call it no gain. That's going to bring up second and goal from the nine. And that time, Vandalia did not get up to the linebackers for yeah. the first time. And Bo Davis was free, and he did a nice job of sticking it right there in the hole. Yeah, and, and that's what the Jackets needed. They needed to get a stop on first and, uh, and hopefully uh, get a good second down play and uh, 
make it tough on the aviators here at the end of the drive. They've done that tonight. They've made them tough yards at the end of drives. Three receivers to the left. Joins takes a handoff. Once again, goes quarterback sweeper on the right side. He's going to be met right at the five-yard line. Pushes forward inside the five. Down near the four. Officials blowing the play dead, and that's going to bring up a third and goal from the four-and-a-half-yard line. Once again, the Yellow Jackets so far bending but not breaking on this drive. And we saw Vandalia not go for two, and they did go for it on fourth and goal from the two earlier. So you would assume that they've got two plays to punch this in if they need them. Yeah, I would I would assume that's pretty, uh, pretty accurate. And uh, that means the Yellow Jackets got a chance to uh, make another big stand here and get the ball back for the offense. What a drive. Eight-minute drive so far <laughs> and counting. So we go under four minutes to go in the third quarter. Uh, this time, Vandalia is going to send out. They got kind of a double tight end package here. Funky formation. Handoff's going to go to Flory. He's met right at the line of scrimmage. In fact, in the backfield, that's going to be a loss. Ryan Jones penetrates the gap, gets a, a tackle for a loss, a two yard loss. That's going to take it back to the seven yard line. Kind of a different formation there by the Aviators and the Jackets able to respond. Yeah, to be honest, I thought maybe they were going to try to sneak a guy, you know, one of the tight ends yeah. out and uh, get something there. And they, they may still do that later on with that formation. But uh, nice recognition there by the Yellow Jackets. Great play by a senior there on the defensive line. And uh, another huge fourth down play coming up here. Huge play for the Yellow Jacket defense. Huge play for the Aviator offense. A big point in this game, 8-8. Eight to eight. As we go under three and a half to go in the third quarter. Coach DeVere wants to call a play. Yeah. Hadn't been yeah. able to. <laughs> Yeah, he's probably over there biting his fingernails just waiting yeah. for it to, to get it back. Well, so. the Yellow Jackets have the win this quarter, but they haven't been able to take advantage yeah. of that because uh, Butler's kept it on the ground. And maybe that has something to do with them not throwing it. it. Is, yeah. The wind yeah. is a little bit stiffer than it was in the first half. All right, here we go. Two receivers to each side in a tight formation. They're going to send uh, one in motion. That's Luke Mitchell. He's going to go out into the flat. Joins looking to the left, looking, looking, getting some pressure from Michael Frank. Joins, reverses course. Gets inside the 10, flag on the field. The ball's going to go out of bounds. They call it an incomplete pass. We've got a flag back here, probably by everybody's reaction on the offense. A crazy play, a crazy <laughs> drive. It looks like the Yellow Jackets, looks like they held. We'll see what the official call is here. Personal foul on Vandalia. Yeah, I don't know if that was one of those blindside blocks yeah, there probably as was. the play but, uh, went back the other way. Yep. Hey, I got one right tonight. Hey, look at that. <laughs> what a play. What one a out of 10 ain't bad, old. right? Is what that a... what Meatloaf used to say? <laughs> one out of 10 ain't bad? No. <laughs> I think it was two out of three. But... I, I believe so. But what, what a play by the Jack in defense. Oh, Once great again, play. Uh, you know, just getting gashed down the field. 10 yards, 10 yards, 10 yards, 10 yards. And then the, the field condenses down here in the red zone, and they hold once again. Yeah, I, I think they have a, a, a flair for the dramatic tonight. Uh, they, they're, they're looking for those opportunities. So Yellow Jacket offense finally with a chance to play here. As we're under three minutes, Johnson drops back the pass in his own end zone, looking for Avante Martin. It's going to be over his head and incomplete. The pocket was collapsing a little bit there on said, so thank goodness he got rid of it. Otherwise, that could have been two for the Aviators. I think all the Yellow Jacket fans held their breath on that one, uh, <laughs> both uh, – the, for the safety, and then once the pass got gone, just to make sure that wasn't an interception. You, you don't want to take a safety or turn it over here in this territory. So second and ten from their own seven-yard line. The Yellow Jackets have been very pass-heavy in the ball game so far. They send two receivers to each side for Cedric Johnson, who has Donovan Johnson to his right. Johnson calls for the snap. He's going to roll out to the right. Getting pressure in the end zone. Side steps it. Side steps more pressure. And did he get out of the end zone? Yes, just barely. Oh. Said Johnson gets out of the end zone, down to the half yard line. And that was obviously a dangerous play, but looking ahead to the next one, you just want to gain positive yards because otherwise you're not snapping at your full uh, 12 yards, your yeah. full 14 yards. You got to adjust everything with the short snap on the punt. So and very important play coming up. And that's not something at the high school level that you honestly practice very much is, is it's snapping from your one yard line. So, yeah. uh, you know, colleges have a little bit more time to do that. You know, they have dedicated special teams guys and stuff. So uh, hopefully the Jackets can get some, uh, some space here. Third and 17 from just outside of the goal line. Johnson has two receivers to each side. Takes a snap and drops back to pass again. Johnson looking, has Isaiah Clark over the middle. He's stuck right over the 20 yard line, but Clark holds on to it. Hopefully he's okay. A great hit by Vandalia, but a first down out to the 21 yard line. And Isaiah Clark down on the field. 
But a beautiful pitch and catch on a key play there. And what a job by Isaiah Clark holding on to that football. Oh, you know, great job holding on to it. I, You know, that was a really tough hit there by the Vandalia uh, player. And, uh, you know, I think it was a clean hit. It was clean. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Just one of those tough football uh, plays. Yeah, bang-bang play that uh, he came in there hard and made a nice tackle. And uh, hopefully uh, Clark will be all right down there on the field. So as he's attended to, uh, we'll go ahead and pause for just a few moments, and we'll be back. Once again, 155 to go in the third quarter. We're all tied up at eight after a key first down for the Yellow Jackets. Isaiah Clark coming off the field on his own power. Uh, obviously took a big hit there, but great catch by Isaiah Clark. Said Johnson now. Nine for 23 on the ballgame, 121 yards. Cody Joins, on the other hand, 15 for 19 for 132 yards. So they've done it, uh, you know, a little bit differently in yeah. terms of completion percentage, uh, but both pretty much with the same result, and the scoreboard reflects that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the two, those two players are keys to their offenses, and they've both uh, done a nice job tonight. Blake Kaiser checks in for Clark. Three receivers to the right. Pitch uh, the – excuse me, the – Throw is going to go to Jacob Wheeler on the screen pass. Going to gain short yardage for about three yards. And that's going to bring up a second and six, we'll call it, uh, on a four-yard gain. As we're nearing the end of the third quarter. We've had some long third quarters this year. This is not one. No, of them. this is uh, kind of the antithesis of that. Uh, very uh, quick one here. Hopefully Yellow Jackets can get something going before it ends. Johnson stepping back to pass. He's going to be flushed out to the left side of the pocket. Looks like a hold on the Jackets. Said Johnson runs out of bounds, and he's taken down pretty late and maybe a horse collar. But I don't see a flag on that side, although I do see a flag in the middle of the field, and I do think I saw a holding penalty on the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, I think. As Jaden Swagger is going to come off the field, and another flag comes out late. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it was tough to see on the far side of the field there, but it, it did look like it was uh, real close to being a late one there over there and maybe even a horse collar. But uh, obviously the Yellow Jackets had some uh, holding there. Yeah. Compound a mistake with maybe another mistake. We'll yeah. see what the call is here from the official. We've got a holding call on the Yellow Jackets and an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the Yellow Jackets post play. So that's going to be a 10-yard penalty on the hold. It's still going to be second down, I believe. That's going to take it back 10, and then the unsportsmanlike will likely be uh, half the distance to the goal. Yeah. But nevertheless, the Yellow Jackets are going to be faced with second and really, really long, I would assume. Um, the only thing Vandalia might be asking here is, do you decline the hold to make it third down? Because the 15 yards is going to take it back yeah. pretty far anyway. So uh, that might be what they're doing to make it third and really long right. instead right. of second and longer. Yeah, they've got a little bit of options here. We'll see how they uh, make this decision. Two fouls on the offense. Holding. All race, number 50. That comes from St. Klein. Great game. ball on sports for my conduct. 78 on the offense. That will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Third down. So Butler does exactly what we thought they might. They decline the holding call and accept the unsportsmanlike call. That'll make it third down uh, since the unsportsmanlike uh, would be a dead ball foul, and that'd be after the play. So third and very long, and the Yellow Jackets go from, you know, second and, you know, pretty good shape, yeah. second and medium, uh, to now being third and long um, with just over a minute to go in the third quarter. And now you, you just hope that, you know, you'd love to get a first down. But at this point, you just want to have a, a good solid play and uh, not, not have something catastrophic happen. It'll be a screen pass. It's batted down and nearly picked off. Unbelievable play there by number 23, Ryan Logan. Got his hands up in the air, read the play great. The, the purpose of that play is to get him to bait up field. Yeah. Uh, but he did not. He stayed right at the line of scrimmage, got his hands on it, and nearly picked it off and walked into the end zone. Yeah, that was almost what I was alluding to there. You know, you just don't want that to happen in that situation because that, that, that type of play can cost you a game if it's a pick six there. So Yellow Jackets send out the punt team. They're going to snap it from their own 14-yard line. Wes Davidson, the junior punter, does have the wind at his back as he looks to punt it away. And there are two Vandalia Butler 
Aviators back to return it. This punt is going to go over their head. No, nice catch there by Cason Bennett. As he saved a lot of yards. He's going to return it over the 50-yard line into Yellow Jacket territory. Boy, mark that one down. That's a huge play that a lot, you know, you don't often notice just catching a punt, but we've seen it bite the Yellow Jackets. The way that one was spinning, I'm pretty sure if it gets over his head, that thing's rolling for a long time, but instead, Butler starts over, starts in Yellow Jacket territory. Yeah, those are the type of ones that sometimes can end up being a 70 or 80 yard punt because of the roll that it gets. And uh, he did a nice job of snagging it and, and putting his team in good field position. Two receivers to each side. Butler ran the ball exclusively almost in the in that in that first drive of the third quarter that took over nine minutes, nine minutes and five seconds, but did not result in any points. Joins takes a snap. He's going to throw it this time. Pass is intended for Wilson. It's going to short hop him and be incomplete. Grant Fair on the coverage. Bring up second and ten. Ball's a little wet. The wind is really whipping right yeah. now. Not easy to throw the ball going this direction. And, and honestly, that's, you know, he's had a couple incompletions, but that's really the first bad ball that he's thrown all night. Second and ten. 51 seconds to go in the third quarter. Butler breaks the huddle. They're going to send a wing and one receiver to the right. The wing's going to go in motion. Fulham. The handoff's going to go to Flory. Flory working off the left side. He's going to get inside the 45 spin down to the 43-yard line. Short gain on the play. Call it a gain of four down to the 42-yard line. So third and medium as Butler will have to snap it here before the third quarter ends. Yeah, and I'm sure they would have loved to go to the quarter and get the win for this third down play, but uh, they'll have to snap this one into the wind and uh, give it a shot here. It's about a four-second difference as Butler breaks the huddle. Probably the last play of the third quarter, unless it's an incomplete pass. Ten seconds and counting on the game clock. Snap is going to be taken by Joins. He hands it off to Flory. There's going to be three penalty flags on the play, <laughs> so something obvious happened there. And Coach Coleman's pretty happy down here as you see him jumping at the bottom <laughs> of your screen. So I got to think maybe a hold on yeah, to Yeah, I think there was a consensus on that one. I don't think there was much doubt, um, you know. Uh, the only thing there is, you know, I, I think they, they do take the penalty with the yardage, but I think they were stopped short. It would have been yeah. fourth down if they didn't. Right. But you don't want to give them in their territory a chance at a fourth down with short yardage. Absolutely. So the penalty is going to take it back into Butler territory to the 47-yard line. That's going to bring up third and long for Butler. We've seen a lot of third and longs in this ball game, um, And this time it's the Aviators as the clock is wound, and that's going to be the end of the third quarter. 8-8, eight eight, no scoring in the third quarter that saw Butler possess the ball for most of the quarter, uh, but still no score. So 8-8 eight eight as we enter the fourth quarter. We'll be back with the conclusion of the ballgame in just a moment. Well, Coach Ward, we've talked about some high school action that's going around. Uh, also some stuff on the national scene. Uh, Dodgers leading in game three of the World Series, three to nothing. And I find it hard to root for the Dodgers, but at least they're not the Astros, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it'd be really hard to root for the Astros. Uh, yeah, the, the Dodgers, uh, they've never been a favorite team of mine, but uh, they are in the National League, uh, you know. It, it, the neat thing about Tampa Bay is to see them do yeah. it with a you know, small market team, do yep, it with a lower payroll. Uh, maybe that gives some hope for our Reds someday. Yeah, who knows? Absolutely. Uh, and then Big Ten football kicked off tonight. Wisconsin leading 14 to nothing over Illinois in the second quarter. Uh, third and long here for Butler. They send Mitchell in motion. The pass is going to be to Mitchell on the bubble screen. He cuts back, gets inside of Jacket territory, spins near the original line of scrimmage. That's going to bring up a fourth and ten. And with the win, we'll see what Butler does. A pretty easy decision, it looks like, as they send out the punt team. Yeah, you never know. Uh, maybe they've got something up their sleeve yeah. like Coach, Coach Dunges. But if I had to guess, I'm guessing they're going to kick this one away and uh, take their chances. Yep, absolutely. I would, I would agree with you there. Uh, Yellow Jackets are going to send back Isaiah Clark. Doing the punting is going to be Luke Mitchell, who does a rugby-style punt. <laughs> so maybe he's got a read off of this. He catches punts. He makes punts. You know, does it all. Yellow Jackets block it. 
Mitchell got a little too close. Grand Fair looking to pick it up, but instead he's just going to fall on it. But the Yellow Jackets with a huge blocked punt. Special teams again. The Yellow Jackets with a fake punt earlier in the ball game. They blocked the rugby style punt here and take over. Instead of deep in their own territory, they'll take over in Vandalia territory. Huge play by the Jackets. Oh, huge play. Uh, you know, anytime you can do that, it's a huge momentum. I know the, the uh, statistics show that when you can get a blocked punt, your chances of winning a game go through the roof. So, uh, Knock on wood. Yeah. Big, big, <laughs> big play for the Yellow Jackets. Now they got to take advantage of it. 11-14 to go. And the Yellow Jackets really having been dominated so far here in the second half, yeah. for lack of a better term, uh, with an opportunity to put some points on the board as they are in Vandalia territory. Fake handoff to Donovan Johnson. And there it going deep, wide open. Jacob Wheeler, the Yellow Jackets. Catch Vandalia Butler looking in the backfield. Ted Johnson with a great fake. Coach Devere with a great call. Wheeler catches a touchdown pass, his second of the ball game, and the Yellow Jackets quickly strike after the uh, blocked punt, and that's something that you typically see. You know, big play on defense or special teams, and then try to go for the end zone after that. Yep, they did a nice job of drawing them up and uh, hitting them over the top. They, you know, they've just not been able to connect on those. That one, there was no doubt as he was wide open, and uh, nice throw. Carson Taylor on for the extra point off the hold of Seth Johnson. That's going to be blocked. Vandalia got a great jump off the edge, and somebody got in there and blocked it, and that's going to make it 14-8. to eight. So only a six-point lead, but nevertheless a lead for the Jackets. Uh, big play from Johnson to Wheeler. Yeah, it was a huge play. It looked like they're on the edge. Uh, their player, it's, sometimes it's really tough to get there from the edge. Their player, it looks like, timed it up perfectly. Perfect. Hit the line of sc scrimmage right as the ball was snapped, and... Uh, Got that nice block there, and uh, hopefully that doesn't end up being a, a huge point at the end of this game. Yeah, because obviously uh, the Yellow Jackets lost by one last yeah, week, so we yeah. know the value of every single point. So 14-8 to eight is the score. Pause for about 30 seconds and then have the ensuing kickoff right after this. My how things have changed, Coach Ward. Uh, Vandalia marching down the field all the way down to the six-yard line, taking up most of the third quarter. The Yellow Jackets hold, punt it away, get another, uh, get, a, get a huge block punt, and then strike real quickly on the pass from Johnson to Wheeler. Yeah, I think this uh, this half so far proves why time of possession sometimes is vastly overrated yeah, because uh, you're right. I think the Yellow Jackets have probably had the ball for maybe a minute total yeah, you're in right. this second half. And uh, they so far they've been the uh, leader on the scoreboard. Yellow Jackets with an onside kick that doesn't look like it's going to go 10 yards. And they'll uh, re-tee it and kick it back again. Well, actually, can Vandalia take it right there? I oh, they called it offsides. They didn't yeah, call. Yeah, they did not call. Okay. So there was no play on that. Which makes sense because I saw the guy run in uh, before the ball had even stopped. Yeah. You know, I don't think it was going to get 10 yards by any means, but uh, he, he called it right away. So I think he did have a so offsides. not illegal touching on the Yellow Jackets. Instead, offsides, which means they'll tee it up from the 35-yard line. Carson Taylor getting ready to kick it away. As he's kicking into a pretty stiff breeze with the wind. Nearly put it through the back of the end zone to start the half. Taylor will kick this one on the ground with that breeze. It's going to be picked up. Bobbled a little bit by Caldell. He'll pick it up finally at the 30-yard line. He's taken down by Hudgens. So all in all, after the botched onside kick and the wind being the way it is, Vandalia starting on their own 37-yard line doesn't sound too bad. No, I think Coach Dungeons will take that just fine. Uh, now it's up to the defense to get a stop here and get the ball back for the offense. A defense that has given up some yards in this ball game, but come up with some key stops and key situations. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I do see uh, Damon Dobbs hobbling off here a little bit. Oh. Hopefully he can get back into the game. He's been a big part of that Yellow Jacket defense tonight. Conley New will check in for Dobbs. Of course, Conley's played a lot. Yeah. There's going to be a motion by... Fulham and the handoff's going to go to Flory behind Fulham. He'll work off the left side. Looks like he gains about five yards uh, over the 40 yard line. And a positive first down play for the Aviators is going to bring up second and five from the 42. Yeah, let's hope they don't get a uh, drive going like they did in the start of the third quarter or that'll end the game here. Yeah, uh, you're right. So Butler with a second and five. 
So they break the huddle. They're going to send two receivers to the left. Fulham's going to be a wing to the right. Wilson is going to be a solo receiver to the right. Joins, takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to Flory. Flory working on the right side, gets a nice block on the edge, and is going to work out to midfield. That's going to be a first down. Gain of eight on the play, and Butler moves the sticks out to midfield. Yeah, nice job setting the edge, getting out there. Uh, was a nice jacket by the uh, tackle by the Yellow Jackets out there on the edge because if that one does, if that uh, player doesn't make the tackle, I think it might have been uh, Vordemark out there. But if he doesn't make that play, uh, he had a lot of room to go after that. Really impressive game so far from Austin Flory. And granted, he's had some really good blocking, but uh, you know, for somebody that we didn't hear too much about coming yeah. into the ball game, he's really asserted himself well. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be a nice player for them for a few years to come here. Junior quarterback Cody Joins takes a snap, looks to throw, sets, hits number 13, Kaysen Bennett. She's taken down, but not before gaining seven yards. Donovan Johnson on the tackle. And that's going to bring up a second and three. Once again, positive first down play for the Aviators. Yeah, and the, the outside linebacker there for the Yellow Jackets did a nice job dropping. He just wasn't quite able to get wide enough, but uh, almost came underneath that one and got a pick. But uh, nice throw and uh, keeping the, uh, the ball moving there for the Aviators. Second and three inside Jacket territory at the 43-yard line. Two receivers and a wing to the right. Pistol formation for Flory. Fulham's going to flex to the left. The handoff's going to go to Flory. He works off the left side, and he's going to get a first down inside the 40-yard line, down to the 38. Aviators have really liked that off-tackle play where they've sent their tight end in motion. Not only has Kyle Fulham caught the ball, caught the touchdown and the two-point conversion and has seven catches on the ball game, but also did a really nice job of sealing the edge for the Aviators. Yeah, that's been a big part of uh, some of their big runs on the outside and uh, just a nice job. Anytime you can get that edge, uh, you're going to gain pretty good yardage out there. And, of course, the uh, offensive coordinator for Butler, it used to be the offensive coordinator for Troy, used those tight ends in almost the same exact yeah. way. And that tight end goes in motion to the left, and he's going to pull this time. Before he breaks one tackle in the backfield, but he's not going to get away from a host of Yellow Jackets that takes him down. After a short gain, Bo Davis and Connor Lindemann were the first ones there. It's going to be a gain of one and a half, maybe two yards. It's going to bring up a second and long. As we approach eight minutes to go in the ballgame, Yellow Jackets leading by six, 14 to eight. Yeah. Butler in the huddle as they break the huddle. Two receivers to the right, wing to the left. Play clock down to five. Joins calls for the snap and gets it. He's going to hand it off to Flory. He works down to the 35-yard line, spins. we got a late flag on the play. We'll see what that is as Butler would be facing a third and seven, but instead we got a holding penalty. Yeah, looks like, looks like holding. That holding call is going to send the Aviators back, as Coach Dunn just says, send them back. So instead of third and six, third and seven, that's going to bring up second and 13. Some really costly penalties tonight from uh, the Aviators. That's uh, especially on some key drives. It's, uh, it's been a big part of this game. Under eight minutes to go. Butler breaks the huddle to have the ball in the left hash at the 41-yard line. Trips to the right, tight end to the left. We've seen a lot of quarterback sweep out of this formation. But this time, Joins is going to drop back to pass. Looking to the right, has a man, throws it behind him, and Bo Davis knocks it down, nearly picked off, looking for his favorite target, and Kyle Fulham. I think he had a step, but just a little bit behind him. And that time, uh, Bo Davis closed the gap and, and knocked it down and brings up a third and long. Yeah, you know, Joins has been pretty much on the money all night. That one was just a little behind, like you mentioned. I think if he catches it in stride, he's got some room to run there. But uh, luckily for the Jackets, they didn't hook up. And uh, now it brings up a big third down play. What we've seen from Butler in these situations is they've looked to try to get half of it back yes. or, and yeah. maybe break a tackle, but they have not taken many vertical shots in the ball game. No, and they've done a good job of getting half of it and setting themselves up for success on fourth. Joins back to pass, looking for a short pass. He's going to overthrow it. Donovan Johnson and Kurt Spangler dropping in the zone coverage there. So the ball goes over the head of Ryan Wilson. And that's going to bring up a fourth and 13, and on comes the punt unit for Butler. 
Yeah, and maybe a little surprising here that they punt it and, and don't take a shot. I know that they, they've been playing that field position game all, all, all game, but at some point, you know, it gets tough to make those long drives as you get closer to the end of the game. Yellow Jackets and the Aviators both run on uh, their 11th player. Thought Back we were going to go 10 on 10 there for a minute. <laughs> Back to punt, Luke Mitchell. Snaps a little low. Mitchell does a nice job to pick it up and gets this one off. Of course, the Yellow Jackets blocked one earlier, and that's going to bounce into the end zone. Kind of a fortunate bounce there for the Yellow Jackets as it was rolling along the sideline and just happened to go into the end zone. It could have easily taken a right turn and gone out of bounds. But the Yellow Jackets will take over on their own 20-yard line, 7-14. And you know that the Jackets have not run the ball much tonight. Uh, so you would assume that they're probably going to stay aggressive here. This would be great time for a seven-minute drive, uh, but that has not been the Yellow Jacket MO tonight. Not not tonight, um, you know, with some of the changes on offense and some of those players out uh, and not playing. It, uh, they definitely had a different mindset, and Coach Dungeons has been very aggressive all night long. Bo Davis in the backfield now, said Johnson. Calling for the snap. He's going to run behind Bo Davis, and he's going to be dropped in the backfield. Said Johnson with no running room. Tackle for the loss there. I think it was number two, Chandler Purdue. But uh, several of the aviators were in the backfield there. Yellow Jackets just not able to get that one blocked. Yeah, you know, and um, it is going to be tough here. You know, uh, I think uh, Vandalia has a pretty good idea that Yellow Jackets would like to run the ball. But I, Yellow Jackets might still have to take a shot over the top because of the aggressiveness of the defense. Johnson back to pass, looking, has Wheeler across the middle. Wheeler comes down with it and gets a first down. Out across the 30 to the 31-yard line on a little seam route across the middle. Jacob Wheeler been a key target for Seth Johnson so far in the ball game, and the senior-to-senior -senior connection's been really, really good. Yeah, I mean, you'd, you'd love to run the clock out running the ball, but that's just not going to be the way it's going to happen tonight for the Yellow Jackets, and they're playing to their strength and doing what they've done well and uh, keeping those chains moving. Yellow Jackets will not have to snap this one until about the midway point of the fourth quarter. As Johnson's going to send three receivers to his right, Donovan Johnson. Running back to the right, John said is going to roll out to the right, throw across his body, and hits Isaiah Clark, but is he out of bounds? I can't see the signal over there. Looks like incomplete pass is the signal. Yeah. They'll bring up second and ten. Just ran out of real estate. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the, the good thing there was said had a guy kind of tracking him down, but you definitely don't want to take a sack in yep. that case. You know, get the ball away and live to go another second down. And unfortunately, the clock does stop, but uh, they'll take a shot at it here on second. So second and 10 from the 30-yard line. 6-11 to go in the ball game. Yellow Jackets lead by six. Johnson drops back to pass. This time he's going to throw it back to Avante Martin. Ball's in the air and hits the turf, nearly intercepted by Vandalia Butler. And I hear you exhale there. <laughs> that would have been a disaster. As that's been a bread and butter play yeah. for the Yellow Jackets all year. Vandalia was right there, though. They, they were all over that. One. That is the type of catastrophic play that the Yellow Jackets cannot afford at this point in the game. You know, you'd love to keep getting first downs and getting the ball down the field, but the defense has done a good enough job tonight that you don't want to put them in a bad situation at this point in the game. So third and 10 from their own 30-yard line. The Yellow Jackets have hooked up on a couple of these. Uh, mainly Jacob Wheeler has been a really nice target for said Johnson. Butler showing blitz off the edges as Masters and Caudill are up around the line of scrimmage. We'll see if they get out of it. Now they're going to blitz two guys. Johnson gets out, rolls to the right. He's going to be tackled from behind near the 35-yard line at the 34. Does stay in bounds. Does stay in bounds. The clock will run. A modest gain on the play. We have a timeout, though, by Butler to stop the clock. So 5.52 to go in the ball game. 14 to 8. The Yellow Jackets are going to set up to punt here on fourth and five. We'll be back with that punt in the end of the game in just a moment. Okay, hey, Coach Ward, uh, Yellow Jackets lead by six. Obviously, the punting game has been kind of feast or famine for the Yellow Jackets all year. They've had their troubles at times, uh, but obviously they've had some, some really nice plays off it, namely the fake punts, one of them tonight. I don't think the Yellow Jackets are going to fake in this situation. But, boy, you're just hoping for good blocking, good snap, good punt, 
uh, and let your defense do what they've done all game, and that is hopefully bend but don't break and, and keep Vandalia out of the end zone. I would think so. You know, uh, if Coach Dunge uh, decides to call up a <laughs> fake one here, he might get, you know, the, the bravest coach of the year award, uh, definitely for me, but uh, we'll, we'll see what they do here. Good snap. Punt is away by Davidson. It's going to hit the ground into Butler territory, but doesn't get much of a bounce either way as yeah. it's downed right at the 43-yard line, and that's where Butler will take over. First and 10, 5.44 to go in the ballgame. We were talking a little quick. Uh, uh, I shouldn't judge. Not not necessarily a bad timeout call, but I think that that shows a lot of what Butler's been trying to do all ball game, and that is they're not a real big play offense. At least they haven't shown that tonight like the Yellow Jackets. They've been more of a five yards, ten yards, and drive their way down the field. Yeah, I think they, they wanted to use that timeout there to save themselves about 30, 35 seconds, and uh, they did that, and knowing that you know they're going to try to take the ball down the field and end it on this drive. And they're going to run the ball on first down. Flory's going to be taken down in the backfield by Connor Lindemann and Conley New. Boy, you got to say, you got to give a shout out there to Connor Lindemann. Uh, he's had a whale of a ball game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, for somebody who hasn't played very much, really nice job by Connor. He's stepped in, done a nice job. You know, he's, uh, let's be honest, so, you know, Con Connor's a little undersized out there, but he's just <laughs> done a nice job. I was trying to think of a good way to say yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he is, but uh, he's done a great job of st sticking his nose in there, making some great plays. Uh, just really proud of the effort he's given out there tonight. Another one of those seniors that's just worked his way all oh. along, and you know, he's lining up behind Zane Latimer, another one of those seniors. Those two guys are really done a nice job holding the middle, second and nine. Joins back to pass. Now he is looking deep for Fulham. Fulham down the sideline, just on the out, out of the outstretched arms of Fulham as they try to double move there on the hitch and go. But Grant Fair and Miles Vordermark right there. And, uh, you know, surprise me, surprise a lot of people probably if Vandalia takes a shot and they almost connect. Yeah, and uh, pretty good coverage, but he still almost dropped that in there, you know, in that little little bucket there and uh, just just barely missed. Kind of like the Yellow Jackets were there early in the game when they were trying deep and just quite couldn't connect when they had some things. Play clock is reset to 25 and running now as Butler gets the benefit of that reset on the long incompletion. Of course, the teams have to bring their, the ball back to their huddle this year. They're going to send out two receivers to the left, wing back to the right, joins, calls for the snap. He's got Fulham behind him, drop back to pass. Joins looking over the middle, has Fulham, he catches it inside jacket territory, down inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. We've seen that play on the other end from Johnson to Wheeler. This time, joins. Hits Fulham across the middle and into Jacket territory. Nice play there by Butler. Yeah, hit him in stride, and uh, he had a little room to run there after the catch, and uh, now they've got something going here. So first and 10 to the 29-yard line. Under five minutes to go in the ball game. The Aviators looking over to the sideline. And it looks like the Yellow Jackets defense is going to have to get one more big stop uh, to win this game. Handoff's going to go to Fulham. Sorry, not to Fulham, to Flory as he makes a man miss at the line of scrimmage. Yellow Jackets had it bottled up, but a nice cut to the right. And then Cam Vordermark on the tackle, but not before a gain of six or seven yards. Yeah, and, you know, one thing I was just thinking about, you know, it's been a, you know, interesting game here. But one thing we haven't had, we've had turnovers on downs, but we have not had a You're traditional right. turnover tonight. Uh, you know, obviously here as we get towards the end of the game, something like that could really uh, decide to be the deciding factor in this one. Butler breaks a huddle. Junior quarterback Cody joins. Has a wing to the right, two receivers to the right. Austin Flory in the backfield. Handoff's going to go to Flory. He cuts to the left. Works behind a block. He's going to be stood up right at the line of scrimmage. Uh, short gain, if any, on the play. Conley New was the first one there for the Yellow Jackets. We'll call it no gain. That's going to bring up a third and four as that clock is running. We're getting close to three minutes to go in the ball game. probably by the time this next snap is made. And uh, you don't want to say that this is the deciding drive. Yeah, I was just going to say, though, pretty I, close. I feel, uh, you get that feeling anyways. You get the feeling that this is going to be what decides the game. Uh, it, it may not prove that way, but uh, it sure has the feel of that right here tonight in uh, Sydney Memorial Stadium. So I gave him a short yard gain on the play. So third and three at the 22-yard line. Three receivers to the right. Joins is going to fake the handoff. He's going to throw it out to Luke Mitchell. Mitchell makes a man miss, gets inside the 15-yard line, down to the 14-yard line. That's going to be a first down, although there is a flag on the field. So potentially a big call here, depending on who this is on. Looks like in the area of maybe receiver holding, and oh. it is. 
huge, another huge penalty call uh, against the Aviators. You know, uh, it seems like every time they get one, it's just at a crucial point, and uh, that's that's just tough to overcome in a game like this where two teams are so close. Yeah, and, and the penalty happened far enough downfield that it's only going to be, in essence, a three-yard penalty. But still, third and six from the 25 or first and 10 from the yeah. 14, the Yellow Jackets will obviously take this. But Butler's still in, in pretty decent oh, position, yeah. third and six, knowing that you have two plays to get it. Butler breaks the huddle. Wing to the left and Fulham. Two receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. Joins, takes the snap, looking to the left. He has a man, but overshoots him, and it's picked off by Donovan Johnson. Johnson catches it at the 20-yard line, returns it to the 25. The intended pass for Mitchell, and he was open, but just one that sailed, you know, for a guy who's had a great ball game. That one just sailed on uh, Joins just a little bit, and Donovan Johnson was right there to pick it off, and a huge play for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, and, you know, I, I'll be honest, you know, I, I, obviously I'm a Yellow Jacket at heart, but you, you almost feel for Joins there. He's been so accurate all night. You know, unfortunately, he's kind of thrown exactly with the way the wind's blowing here, and that's yeah. sometimes where those sail. You're right. Uh, and that's just a tough way there uh, for that drive to end for them. Now we'll see if the Yellow Jackets can run the ball. Uh, they have not done so very well tonight. Said Johnson looking for running room, and not only does he not get it, he fumbles it. The ball's on the ground, and Butler has it inside the 15-yard line. So pretty much right back to where it was. Said hmm. Johnson gets bottled up. The ball is on the ground. Butler defense comes up with a huge play. So Yellow Jackets pick one off. Uh, look like they're sitting pretty, and then on the very next play, they fumble, and the ball's going to go back to Vandalia. Yeah, and then they were talking there a little bit. I don't know if, uh, you know, some of the other guys saw something a little different, but uh, it, it settles with Vandalia Ball. And, uh, yeah, turnovers, uh, you know, kind of offset, but are definitely a huge yeah. part of the end of this game. Well, it game. looks like the Yellow Jacket offense is staying on the field right now, although I think the Butler offense is also on the field, although it's hard to tell because a lot of, both teams have a lot of guys going both ways. Well, maybe, maybe we got a little game of chicken going on here. The first one to leave <laughs> uh, is on defense, I guess. So the officials talk it over. And it looks like they're going to rule said Don Johnson down. During the play, inadvertent whistle by Wolf will replay the down. Oh, my goodness. So not wow. only, so an inadvertent whistle, not only do the Yellow Jackets keep the ball, but it's going to be first and 10 instead of second and 20. And uh, obviously, like you said, we're no, we don't make any bones about it. We're, we're rooting for the Jackets. We want them to win. But uh, you talk about a break. Uh -oh. That's a huge break. Huge, huge break. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, that's just uh, that's that's heartbreaking if you're an Aviator fan. And uh, yeah, but the game's not over yet. So first and ten from the 24-yard line, fake handoff to Johnson, and said Johnson keeps it. He's going to work out across. Uh, first down marker going to be a gain of about 13 yards, and that's the first run that the Yellow Jackets have really popped one. Said Johnson picks up a first down and gets uh, the Yellow Jackets a little closer to midfield and, more importantly, keeps that clock running. Yeah, yeah, get them a little more room there, and uh, everybody can exhale a little bit there along with me, uh, but uh, not, definitely not over here. Uh, sure. They just got to keep uh, hold of the ball and make sure no, no big, uh, big mistakes. Yellow Jackets slowing things down, which uh, at times today they have played pretty up-tempo. And most times today they've thrown the ball and have not run the ball, uh, but obviously in running time right now. Said Johnson takes the snap. He's going to roll out to the left with the intention of keeping it, puts his head down, gets across the 40, and there's going to be a timeout on the field. So timeout, Vandalia Butler, 155 to go in the fourth quarter. And the Yellow Jackets leading by six with the ball. They'll have second and seven. We'll step away for just a second and be right back. Well, Coach Ward, a game that has been incredibly well played, uh, uh, you know, from a turnover perspective <laughs> until here at the end. You know, you get the interception. I kind of jinxed it there, didn't <laughs> I? You did. You said something. <laughs> you get the interception uh, by the Yellow Jackets. 
and then the very next play you get the fumble but the inadvertent whistle and look there's yeah, you know, we can pretend it didn't happen and this and the other, but it, it was a huge call. Yes. I mean, there's yes. no doubt about it. Uh, but uh, the Yellow Jackets are on the fortunate side of that inadvertent whistle and now trying to salt the game away running the ball, which has not been their forte tonight. Yeah, you know, they still have to take advantage of that, that, that break that the Yellow Jackets got, and we'll see if they can do that here. So Johnson fakes the pitch, and he's going to be drugged down from behind by number 23. Ryan Logan and a great play by Logan because the Yellow Jackets had him fooled. There was just one guy that shot that gap and got him down. Otherwise, you know, there was there were a couple of Yellow Jacket guys downfield that were looking for guys to block because yeah, there was I nothing to grasp. I think that would have been a uh, a huge gain for the Yellow Jackets, but a nice sound tackle by Logan there and uh, sets up a huge third down play here. You know, yeah. uh, they get a stop here. Um, you know, I know they don't have any timeouts, but they still get the ball back with, uh, you know, enough time to, to take some shots. And, sure. Uh, so, if, so doing a little bit of math, you know, with the rain coming down, I would assume the Yellow Jackets are probably going to run the ball. But the option is still there um, to, to throw the ball, which the Yellow Jackets have done effectively at times tonight. But then you risk giving them the ball yeah. with 130 to go as opposed to with no timeouts now for Vandalia. Uh, they're going to get the ball with under a minute, uh, barring a turnover of some sort if you – Hold if you run the ball, and you got to assume that said Johnson's going to be trusted to do yes. that. Yeah, you want your senior having the ball here, making the decision, and and actually the Jackets throw a short screen pass, a safe play, and they're going to get the first down. But a penalty flag is in the backfield, probably a hold. The ball's going all the way down the sideline. Avante Martin trots into the end zone for the moment, a 60-yard touchdown pass. But there is a penalty flag, one yard past the line of scrimmage, and it's a hold on the Yellow Jackets, and it's coming back. So we've talked about some key holding penalties here and there from Vandalia. Obviously, that one could have ended the game for the Jackets, but now the Yellow Jackets are going to march all the way back, and they're <laughs> going to have a third down. Uh, you know, kind of a gutsy call there by the Yellow Jackets. Very putting gutsy it in call. The air, <laughs> Very gutsy and call. And it almost paid off. Yeah, yeah, a nice call. Um, you know, didn't didn't end up with the, you know, the hold call there. Didn't have, end up with the result that they were hoping for, but a gutsy call, and uh, they've still got one more shot here at third down. So 138 on the clock, and as the official said, the balls the the clock will start on the snap, and it's going to be a snap that's going to bring up a third and 17, third and 16 ish. Called third and 16, like the scoreboard from the 32 yard line. Said Johnson and Donovan Johnson in the backfield as everybody has gotten back to the line of scrimmage now. Two receivers to each side, at least as the setup right now. As Devin Stewart, the offensive coach for the Yellow Jackets, relays the call from Britton Devere up at the box. Johnson and Johnson in the backfield. Said's going to move Donovan to the right side in motion. Johnson drops back to pass, and he's going to be sacked. So the Yellow Jackets looked like they were trying to get something down the sideline there, uh, but probably a wise play there by, by said not to throw it under pressure, but also keep the clock running. And we'll see, looks like the Yellow Jackets are going to let the clock run down um, and call a timeout with one on the play clock and then punt it away. Yep. And that'll be a big punt. You know, uh, it'll be interesting to see whether Vandalia goes after it or if they set up the return yeah. here. Uh, yeah, you remind me on that rule. I think that uh, it's not an automatic first down because uh, this is going to be 4th and 25. Right. So I would assume Vandalia is going to go after the punt because even if they ran into the kicker, right. I think right. it's going to be 4th and 10 then. Absolutely. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure on that. The rules have changed so many times. Timeout by the Jackets with 52 seconds left in the game. 14-8 to 8 is the score. Uh, kind of a wild end of the mm. game so far, Coach Ward, but the Yellow Jackets trying to hang on and get above 500. Yeah, you know, uh, last week was a very exciting finish. This one's turning out to be, you know, uh, it's tough to uh, see too many games that are 14 to 8 that have this much excitement right at the end, but uh, definitely it's there, and uh, we'll see what the uh, Yellow Jacket uh, defense can do after this punt. Into the wind. Yeah. With the rain. Obviously, the snap. The blocking and the kick here are at a premium, but don't forget they've got two dangerous guys out there. One of them named Mitchell that yeah. uh, they can bust one at any point. Yeah, he, uh, he actually they're going to send back one. It looks like, and that's going to be number thirteen, uh, Case and Bennett. I wonder if that's a dead giveaway that yeah, Butler's going to come after I this. I think they're coming after it. Uh, Yellow Jackets got to get it blocked up front. 
So fourth and 24 from the 24. Miles Vordemark on the snap. Wes Davidson catches it and gets it away. The punt, he dies in the wind and the Yellow Jackets get away from it and they down it at the 45 yard line. So Pendelli will probably take that after the way that things were going. Yeah. Um, and uh, 42 seconds left, has not been a big play offense, but when they've tried for those big plays, they've been looking in the direction of number 16. Yep, yep. And, uh, you know, they've shown the ability to throw the ball downfield. They just haven't quite connected. And uh, it's going to be a, uh, you know, hold your breath last 42 uh, seconds of this game. Looks like some discussion on the field. Uh, they have not moved the chains yet from the previous mark. Is the officials holding it over there? Can't be simple sometimes, you know? <laughs> no, no. I never saw the flag on the I play. I didn't either. You know? I didn't either. So instead of starting on the yellow jacket 45, Butler will start on their own 45. No timeouts. 42 seconds left. Yellow jacket scrambling a little bit as they put Jacob Wheeler in, uh, the senior safety who has been playing a lot of offense, but obviously in the key situation, Jacob goes in on defense. Two receivers to each side as the officials look to reset here. Once again, we haven't seen Butler move fast yet, so this will be something new. Joins in the backfield, joined by Austin Flory. Joins been very effective throwing the ball so far. Connor Lindman comes on the blitz for the Yellow Jackets. Joins, pumps, and keeps the ball. Now he's got a man wide open down the left side. He hits Bennett in the Yellow Jacket territory at the 40-yard line. Fortunate for the Jackets there that yeah. Bennett is down, but Butler's scrambling quickly here. 33 seconds to go. The clock is running under 30. Joins calls for the pass. He's going to throw an out route that goes off the hands of number 12, Luke Mitchell, and out of bounds. That's going to bring up second and 10. And just an observation, it seems like when the offense moves faster, the ball gets spotted faster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's amazing how that happens. Uh, really nice play on the, the one there before that, that last incompletion. Uh, kept it alive. Thought he was going to be down there, which would have been catastrophic at this point, you know, with the clock still running. Uh, but he made a nice play, got it to the open receiver, and kept him alive. 40 yards to go, 25 seconds. As we've seen much of this ball game, the Vandalia Butler offense against the Yellow Jacket defense. As time of possession has been in Butler's favor. There's a quick pitch out to the left side to Bennett. He's taken down the inbounds. Yeah. Clock is running. What a play by Grant Fair. The ball flies away a little bit. 16 and counting, 15 and counting. Butler scrambling on offense as the ball is still coming back and it's wet as they're cleaning it off. Third and short. What a great play Seven, to tackle him in bounds. Six. There's the spike of the ball with three seconds left. And like you said, Coach, what a play by oh. Grant Fair to get that ball down inbounds, breaking on that hitch the, route. I mean, that, you know, that was that was just huge that he was able to tackle him inbounds. I don't know any other way to put it. You know, it's kind of it's it's uh, it left me speechless there. I know a simple tackle like that, you know, most people probably wouldn't bat an eye at it. But uh, keeping him inbounds there uh, made this the last play for the uh, Aviators. We'll see if the Yellow Jackets uh, roll with it or if they call timeout to set up their prevent defense as they've got everybody back. Three receivers to the right, and we're going to get a timeout by Coach Dunn just so he sees the alignment. Uh, now, as I look at that, you got three receivers to the right, but don't forget the one guy on the yeah. left has been yeah. his favorite target. Yeah, they, and they've, you know, they've already done that once in the, or, you know, a time or two in the game, and uh, definitely wouldn't be afraid to do that at this point either. Yellow Jackets, you know, know something deep's coming. Uh, you, you know, they're not going to try, a, a, you know, I, I don't see them trying to hook and ladder or anything like that in this situation. So, you know, it's deep. You just got to get everybody covered and uh, get that ball knocked down and uh, get out of here with the victory. So on the plus side for Vandalia, Cody Joins is going to have the wind at his back. So I think getting it into the end zone should not be any trouble, uh, provided that he has time. But on the minus side, the wind, or I'm sorry, the rain is coming down. So yeah. that's not an easy thing to deal with at this point. No, you know, you, they got to get the, the snap off and uh, get a good grip on the ball and uh, give it a chuck down there and, and see what happens. Yellow Jackets make a substitution. They take out a linebacker. You know, something you don't see very often in high school is that nickel package. Yeah. But they're going to get an extra defensive back in the ball game. Miles Vordermark's probably going to go back and play dead center field, I would guess. 
It's Kurt Spangler telling the defense to get back. Five receivers, three to the left, two to the right as Butler comes Nobody out in formation. This guy, you know, giving him plenty of room down here on this end. Joins looking to throw, looking, looking. He's going to launch toward the end zone. He gets there, and it's going to be nearly caught by number 16, Fulham, just off of his fingertips. Wow. And the Yellow Jackets come out with a 14-8 <laughs> victory. Oh, my goodness. And once again, we don't have the benefit of instant replay. I know. But that looks like it was uh, could be caught. looks like there's a Yellow Jacket down on the field. We hope that he's okay. Uh, but what a what an ending to uh. the ball game, 14-8. The final score, the Yellow Jackets just hang on. Yeah, and that's one, you know, I'm, you're, just exhale a little bit there uh, as that was a very exciting end to a game there that was uh, very close all the way throughout, and uh, both teams had plenty of chances there. So the Yellow Jacket coaching staff is huddled down around uh, the injured player. Once again, hopefully that is okay. The Yellow Jackets moved to 5-4 and four with the victory. Yeah. 14 to 8, and what can you say about the defense except for they came up big in the in the in the spots that meant the most. Made some huge plays, uh, you know. Uh, offense did what they needed to do, but the defense was the star tonight. You know, making those key stops, uh, and uh, you know, and and one there at the end. Uh, great play by Butler there to give it a shot. You know, it it looked pretty uh, like a pretty good throw there, just couldn't quite connect. So, some stats to round out the ball game. Seth Johnson, 12 for 29 for the Yellow Jackets, 185 yards, two touchdowns, including and, uh, and also a two-point conversion. Running the ball, Seth Johnson ran the ball 16 times for six yards. Donovan Johnson had three carries for 16 yards. Receiving for the Yellow Jackets, Avante Martin, three catches for 55 yards. Leading receiver, Jacob Wheeler, six catches for 89 yards, two touchdowns and a two, I'm sorry, one touchdown and a two-point conversion. Isaiah Clark had three catches for 41 yards and a touchdown. Yellow Jackets with seven first downs in the ball game, Butler with 15 as the time of possession was obviously <laughs> well in favor of yeah. Butler in the ballgame. That's a huge discrepancy in first downs, too, that just kind of shows the differences in the way the teams got their yards tonight. You know, Vandalia kind of just moving the ball down the field, moving those chains, and the Yellow Jackets uh, getting it in big chunks at times. From Butler's perspective, Cody, I'm sorry, Cody joins. 20 for 32 for 191 yards, one touchdown and one interception. Running the ball, huge game from Austin Flory, the freshman running back, 30 carries for 110 yards. Also, Joins had four carries for 18 yards, and Luke Mitchell had two carries for 11 yards. Receiving, uh, it was a Fulham and Mitchell show for the most part. Uh, Kyle Fulham, the junior receiver, had eight catches for 103 yards and a touchdown. Luke Mitchell had seven catches for 48 yards. Kaysen Bennett had four catches for 40 yards. And Ryan Wilson had one catch for six yards. Penalties, not just the number in the yards, Coach Ward, but uh, penalties were just such a huge factor uh, from a timing perspective. Yeah, uh, it seemed like every time uh, Vandalia got one, it was at a huge point in a drive, huge point in the game. And, uh, you know, penalties and uh, third and fourth down play plays, I think, are what were the difference in the game tonight. So on the penalty stats, Yellow Jackets, nine penalties for 52 yards. Butler also nine penalties, but for 83 yards. So the Yellow Jackets moved to five and four. Uh, you know, some, some key guys step up tonight uh, in the absence of some guys, Coach Ward. Uh, Connor Lindeman comes to mind. A big play there by Grant Fair at the end. Uh, Donovan Johnson obviously did a really nice job filling in at running back and, and made some nice plays on defense as well with the interception. Uh, but just a lot of guys stepping up. A lot of those guys, seniors, that really have stayed the course through this whole thing, and that's always great to see. Yeah, we mentioned, uh, you know, the Jackets getting off to a good start. They didn't, uh, but they were able to come and overcome adversity tonight, you know, uh, with, with, its, with the guys that weren't playing tonight, overcoming that, and then just overcoming the things that happened during the game and uh, finding a way to get that victory. The, you know, uh, sometimes these are the most rewarding victories as a coach when you don't have everything going right. You know, things – it's tough all night, but man, when you get done, you can you can exhale like I've mentioned a couple times, and just take in the fact that you fought through one and you got a good victory. And Butler falls to two and seven, uh, but what can you say about that? I, I'm sure they'll point to that inadvertent whistle, yeah. and and, and, yeah. I, and I get it. But uh, you know what a what a a team that's two and six to still be battling like yeah. that yeah. and. Uh, 
boy, they, they have some really nice young talent that I think could be pretty good over the next couple years. Yeah, they're going to be a tough out in the playoffs or, you know, however, going forward, whoever yeah, knows, who, knows, knows, yeah. who knows what that's going to look like the next few years. But uh, they've got some nice players, and I think the future is bright uh, for the Vandalia Aviators. But the Yellow Jackets are the victors tonight, 14-8. to eight. Uh, Big big game by the, uh, by the receivers especially. Uh, for the Yellow Jackets, Sed Johnson leads the Sydney to a 5-4 and four record. We should be back next week, we think, uh, for the Troy game at home. Uh, but once again, the Yellow Jackets 5-4. and four. This is Greg Snyder. Thanks to my color man, Mike Ward. Thanks to my stat man, Ed Snyder. Thanks to everybody up here in the press box. We got a late start tonight, but it was worth it. If you're a Sydney fan, 14-8 is the final. Thanks for joining us.